Are you ready for the Low Bros Network? Every Wednesday on the Low Blows Network, the Low Blows team are at hand to break down, analyze, and make fun of all things pro wrestling. Hosted by former pro wrestler Rick Nash. I think the only reasonable thing we can do now is turn John Cena here. Selfie with me, fucking dog. Banned from Nigeria. <laughs> I will be talking to the government tomorrow. <laughs> YouTube star Corporate King. This elephant has four legs. Joe Ross has four legs. Joseph Stalin, if he had two more legs. Bone saw rips off his shirt, yeah? And it says, Shook your law. Big dirty toy player. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Gonna- and the queen of Irish wrestling, Katie Harvey. I want one to sign. Just CM I'm Punk. So or embarrassed. CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> it's low blows. Bravo! It's Paddy's Week, guys, as Ireland, and indeed the world, pre- prepares to celebrate the life of St. Patrick by drinking itself to smithereens, ruining our biggest streets, or this year, uh, going to watch wrestling. Like, that's now a thing, and I kind of love it. So that's how we're going to celebrate our country's patience. So, but as we get kicked off here, on another edition of the Logo, it's Rick Nash here, Teddy Harvey, and Corporate Team joining me as always. Guys, who is the patron saint of wrestling? Uh, this is probably going to sound very generic, but like I was just thinking of Becky because I was uh, thinking about this question earlier and then laughing to myself at the idea of her baiting the snakes out of Ireland with a crutch. <laughs> and just, just a little cartoon image in my head I really enjoyed. I can see it. There's, yeah. there's definitely a meme there somewhere <laughs> if it hasn't been posted already. I'm going to go, I'm not religious and I have a pretty negative view of religion. So I'm going to go with Ric Flair. As in, like, I picture all saints and a lot of priests and the likes of that, like, as being the type who'd, like, wear a robe with nothing on underneath. <laughs> that's who I'm going for. Don't have the best, uh, like, view of religion. So that's me, anyway. Uh, Corporate Keaton, who's your patron saint? Rodney Mack. What? <laughs> what? Keaton beforehand is like, you're not going to get the same as me. And was I right? You I were, was right. I, mean, I didn't think either you would guess Rodney Mack. That'd be really weird if you did, actually. I haven't thought of him in, like, ten years. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I just think he's a patron saint. <laughs> do, you, do you not think he's a patron saint? <laughs> do you say patron saint? No, patron saint. Oh, right. That's the word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 All right. Um, wh- why? Why, yeah. Um, Rodney Mack, right? <laughs> da Mack. Mac, da Mack wrestling WXW. What's the X stand for? Extreme. Extreme. ECW. Name an ECW legend. Raven. Raven Creed. <laughs> Consequences Creed. Consequence Creed is now Xavier Woods. Woods. Forest, trees, trees are green. Paul Green was a centre mid that played for Ireland, right? So you got Ireland. What's the first letter of Paul? P. P, yeah. P. Patrick, St. Patrick. Paul Green played for Ireland. St. Patrick. Patron Saints, Roddy Mack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I have never seen you do that on the fly before! No! That, that was, was amazing! That was impressive! <laughs> How did you? Oh my god, well done! <laughs> That's all we have time for, guys. It's not getting better than this. <laughs> so, do you agree with me now, though? That's the key. Do I, I can't not, because I don't. It's absolutely faultless logic. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> I can't disagree if I try. Does that give, does that give me a point in Queen vs. No. Is, is Rodney no. Mack from the Mean Street Posse? Who am I thinking of? No, I don't. What's he? You're thinking of Rodney. And then there's Picas and Joey Abs. Rodney Mack was on Raw in 2003 with... Teddy Long and Jazz. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, know. No. Tattoo yeah. guy. He did the white boy challenge, and then Goldberg came out and flattened him. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you're talking. And about now that. he's a saint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the patron saint, just saint. to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we have a busy week coming up because yes, we are celebrating Ireland. We're celebrating Irish wrestling because biggest Irish wrestling weekend of the year. Scrapper Mania Five is in the National Stadium. All three of us are going and looking forward to it. We're going to be previewing that and giving our quick picks. We're going to be talking about the in ring from the week. The New Japan Cup started and fast lane was on we're also going to be giving our best and worst of the week and loads more still to come but we're going to get kicked off with the news for the week and the stories that have been grabbing our attention because ladies and gentlemen we are going to give our hot takes our lightning hot takes uh on the stories that we want to discuss so without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's get this show on the road because it's time for hot takes
hot takes. I'm going to get us underway. Uh, I want to talk about the news that broke this week about Jeff Jarrett and Bruce Pritchard being added to WWE Creative. And look, I'm not going to go the predictable route. A lot of people are going, no, what is WWE? Is it TNA now? Because do you know what? And I'm sure Corporate Keen will back me up here. When they were at the helm in TNA... It was all right. It was pretty good. That's some of the best times in DNA. You have the likes of the X Division, the Knockouts Division. You know, I know, like the Knockouts Division sounds like it sound. It doesn't sound great today now that we've come along with the Women's Evolution. But that was the start of the Women's. Like, at Evolution. the time, it was like Knockouts or Divas in like yeah. 08 and stuff. Do you know what I mean so. exactly? So they kind of started that like before it was killed. They were the hipster kind of thing. Where if you look at the WWE roster now, you know Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Bobby Roode. Pretty much a lot of it is the TNA roster from their time so I'm not going to go from that angle but it doesn't excite me I'm not going to rule it out because I'll always give people a chance and give the product a chance because I, I, I'm a wrestling fan first and foremost even before a podcast or anything like that I want it to be good and I want this to work because I'm going to be entertained as a result but it doesn't fill me with excitement and there's a simple reason for it it's because I believe and I think we've seen this happen before Everyone, when it comes to creativity, and when it comes to especially WWE level creativity where you have to have a new full-on show every week, sometimes two or three if it's a pay-per-view week and whatnot, I think everyone has a finite set like number of ideas, of good ideas, that like will change the business. And Jeff Jarrett and Bruce Pritchard, I know there's jokes about Jarrett for days. I know Bruce Pritchard, you know, you can easily kind of make a party of him because he does podcasts in these days and whatnot. Um, but they have contributed a lot to the business, and they've contributed some great memories for all of us uh, in terms of creative. But at the same time, I'm just not convinced that they have... I don't see where this is coming from, where it's like they are the guys to take the business to the new level. When you have Vince McMahon and the McMahons coming out on television and saying, you know, we need to do better, we need to pull our socks up creatively and put on a more compelling show. When when WWE is at the cusp of doing something very special, look at Becky catching on and being the next kind of Daniel Bryan, John Cena type figure who's catching on with a mainstream audience. Look at even Kofi Kingston now is becoming a big thing. Look, they have got a lot of buzz around their product and it is a time where it's like you need to capitalize on this and turn it into something special and then you tell me that Jeff Jarrett and Bruce Pritchard are going to be the guys to bring it home I don't think so I'd like to see Youngblood in there I'd like to see like fuck it what's Jason Jordan has he got any fucking idea you know what I mean if you gave me someone like that where I'm like I've actually no idea what this person is like creatively it was like I don't know one of you guys might remember who was it was it uh, Chrissy Hemi do you remember she was put in charge of booking the knockouts division in TNA and people yeah. shitting it? And they're like, what does she know? She was just a bikini model. And I'm like, no, let me hear what she has to say because the fact that she's been given that job says that she probably has these discussions. So I'm interested in hearing what people with new ideas have to say because, like, okay, Katie, you'll know this. You know, a wrestling road trip is basically a three-hour discussion of fixing the business. And it's like, this is what needs to happen. They need to do this. They need to do that. All wrestlers who spend enough time, and WWE spend more time than anyone else on the road, think about this stuff non-stop, all day, every day. So these kind of people do have ideas. I feel like we've seen Jarrett and Bruce Pritchard's best stuff. I feel like it would have been a great opportunity to give it to someone else, give it to someone new, um, give it to someone younger that hasn't had a go at it, and then we're going to get an exciting product. But having said that, I will give it an opportunity because I do want it to be good. So I'm not going to slate it right out of the bat. It just didn't fill me with confidence. Guys, am I missing something here? Did you guys, when you, when you heard this, this news, were you guys excited or not excited or uh, much of the same? This is the first time I'm hearing this news, to oh, be really? honest. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. I, you see, like for me, I, I don't know what idea is coming from whose brain and it just doesn't make a difference to me. Do you know what I mean? Like it, you don't know... Who could have good ideas? Who could have shit ideas? It's, I'd, I'd see your point, but I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't really care. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, and you're right in what you say. You don't know who comes. And ultimately, Vince McMahon is, has the last say on everything. So ultimately, it's, it's, it's his fingerprints on absolutely everything we see on the WWE television. But at the same time, it's like, if you told me, like, again, uh, Jason Jordan is such an arbitrary example because I've never thought about if he'd be good at that. But, like, when I heard that he was being a road agent, for example, I'm like... This is interesting. I kind of want to see. Or if you told me Jamie Noble or someone was booking SmackDown now, I'm like, 
okay, I'm kind of into that. Like, I kind of want to know, or Dean Malenko is being given creative. And I'm like, right, I don't, th- I don't think we've seen this before. I'd be excited about that. I just find it hard to be excited. Also, another thing, which probably should have been the whole hot take, Dana Warrior now got a job on WWE Creative. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand I, that. I don't get it either. <laughs> there is one thing I'll say, though, right? I remember this is the only creative-related thing I can sort of talk about is uh, I remember one time Jim Cornette saying that for Ring of Honor, he used to, he was in charge for creatively, and everyone knew it, and they were like, this is fucking shit, oh, this is so bad, I hate this, I hate this. So they told everyone, right, we've changed it now, someone else is in creative, and someone else is running it. And over the next few months, people were like, oh man, the difference is it's so good, it's amazing, it's really, really good. And then it turned out it was Jim Cornette who was still running it the whole time. So, I don't know, I, like, it's just one of those things, I... I I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll be great. Maybe they'll be shit. This is the yeah. thing. We don't know, and we'll see. Uh, but, but again, it was just that's my hesitancy. I'm not slating them for what they did in TNA. I actually liked. What year were they in charge? Uh, Jeff Jarrett was in charge since very early. Like he was Seen in charge. The first one, kind of. Yeah, like he kind. Of, it was Jerry Jarrett's company, and Jeff kind of ran the day to day. Uh, so he would have ran the creative from like when it was weekly pay per views. And then, like, kind of, he, he would have booked it on and off coming up. But, like, he would have came up with the X Division. He would have came up with a lot of the stuff that made it cool back in the day. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like, okay, fair enough. Jeff Jarrett obviously does have some t- stuff to offer. It's just, like, he had 100% control there, and it didn't kind of go well. Bruce Pritchard, and, it, like, there was good ideas, but I feel like the ideas are gone. Bruce Pritchard, I, I don't know. Again, just it, it's more just uncertainty, but that's the reason I'm uncertain, not because lol TNA. That's just an easy stick to beat them with, I think. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think the real thing about booking is it's actually wrestlers who come up with the ideas and the pitches, mm. and a lot of the time it's the writers. Either you have to convince them that it was their idea, so they run yeah. with it, or uh, <laughs> or they're just there to edit the wrestlers' ideas. Yeah. So, I think it depends how they're going to relate to the talent if they're going to. Mm-hmm. they're going to be good or not and will they get their respect and will talent yeah. work with them and will they will want talent to? pitch to them will they feel comfortable coming to them with ideas I think that's going to be the key to it this is it as well and you bring up a very good point because it's like it's also as well half of it is create the idea and half of it is the execution you know and you have to get lads on side for it to actually pull off your idea if you give a lad a shit idea he's just going to do shit with it if he thinks it's shit and doesn't want to do it and doesn't further his career he's not going to do a good job you know what I mean so there's that to be taken into account as well so we shall see let's put a pin in this and let's come back to it down the line anyway moving on Wrestlemania it's been announced that they are they're doing it in Tampa next year in Florida who's excited for that are you excited for that yeah Am I? That doesn't sound very. You no, don't sound very excited. I'm not. Are, are you excited? I actually, yeah. Like I kind of want to go. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Fuck his vote anyway. You ruined my point altogether. Disneyland, what? Orlando Magic are my favorite basketball team. <sighs> right. Well, I'm not excited. Okay. <laughs> okay that's, sorry. That's my point. Sorry, I didn't know which way you wanted me to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping your honest answer would be no, because you, like everyone else, want a lovely. Westmead WrestleMania. <laughs> and I know you do. And I know you do as well. Think about it. All the fields and the, the room and space. And you can put a ring in the middle of it. You can bring in lots of You mean actual people. Westmead? That's not a euphemism. No, I mean like actual, re- actual Westmead. <laughs> what did you think of Westmead WrestleMania meant? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> what, what analogy could it I, even be? I thought he was going to like explain it to me. <laughs> no, I mean like a Westmead WrestleMania. the old Westmead WrestleMania, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, a, a, an actual Westmead. Me, me, yeah. <laughs> and there's the show title. Yeah, <laughs> <like> the <laughs> um, but uh, do you not want a uh, or a long? I would WrestleMania? definitely watch that. Like, I mean, I'm I, not know, lie. I know CBL would like a Longford WrestleMania. <laughs> Longford WrestleMania would be fine to me too. Uh, Cavan WrestleMania somewhere, you know what I mean? Like anywhere, not for Mana, hey for Mana, but like any of the other counties, you know, like you know, Offaly or wherever. Uh, but you know, they've just gone to the same place as always. Just another American city. Right. And I'm just disappointed. I think it's, it's a wasted opportunity. <laughs> well, you never know. Your campaign, a day ago, join the Corporate King campaign. I did. I had a, I had a petition up for this ages ago, but it got taken down. How many votes did it get before? Um, 
three or so. <laughs> it did all right. It was just all the West Mead people That's on Twitter. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I know it was gas because this is back when they had like 50 petitions. All right. And it was like zero, one, two, three, and one was like, put Session Mott in tournament to death where she might fucking die yes. and get murdered. 200 signatures. <laughs> and like CZW tweeted about yes. that. Well, that's probably going to happen now. <laughs> oh, man, imagine. No, I don't, oh, that'd be so good. All right, there we go. West Mead, WrestleMania. We're getting the ball rolling here, guys. WrestleMania 37. Get your signatures in. Actually, you know that killer WrestleMania party? I don't want anything to do with that. No, wouldn't it be great? <laughs> no, no. We can do it live. Come? Do it live from WrestleMania itself. <laughs> it's in Ireland, like. <laughs> well, actually, that's a good question. What would you do, right? Hypothetically, if there was a WrestleMania in Ireland, I mean, it'd probably be Dublin, even though there's no venues. It probably would have to be Westmead. <laughs> but, um... What, like, what would the party situation be? In, like, in just case? go and wouldn't have a party. There'd be no point to everyone <laughs> yeah. to go to WrestleMania. Like, do a live party. Like, yeah, like, but I don't know if WWE would be sound with that. You know, <laughs> we're just going to, like, run our business over here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to charge admission fee yeah. into <laughs> your event. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that would work. Imagine the poor fucker that couldn't get a ticket, so he goes to low blows and there's nobody there. <laughs> uh, That's actually really sad. Not even on screen. And it's <laughs> just... <laughs> Gets kicked out at the normal time. That's depressing. Uh, anyway, look, we'll see. Who knows? Westby, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Westby, well, Westby we definitely Australia. will come to it yeah, absolutely yeah there you go you send in your tweets to WWE guys Power. hashtag Westmead Wrestlemania moving on so um, the story that interested me this week was about uh, Roman Reigns and the off season for wrestling mm. because you know a lot of people at home and abroad have asked me my thoughts on this and uh no, they haven't. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. That's just what people say when they Don't want when they want to talk about something. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I have actually thought about this before, though. <laughs> um, and I actually think it's a fantastic idea to do an off season. It is something I've said before. Mm. Especially like in the training school, if someone's injured, I make them sit out. I won't let them take part in training. And when they complain to me, I say, look, we don't have an off season. So if you're hurt, you're hurt and you need to sit down. Um, every other major sport in the world has an off season. They have, even if you're training in the gym, weight training, you have a deload week where you reduce your weights and you know, you active recovery and all that stuff. Wrestling is the only sport in the world, I think, that makes you just go three, six, five all year round. Mm. And it just, it has its holes on everyone's bodies. So yeah, definitely, it needs an off season. Like, why not just have two months off during the summer? Like, and let the 205 Live roster fill the slot. Like, you don't have to stop the show. Just fill it with other stuff, you know? Just change the programming a little bit. But also, I think it'll help with fans as well Mm. and burnout and fatigue because um, I was talking to a guy today who told me he only watches wrestling between Rumble and WrestleMania. Yeah. Just tunes out there. And I think that's quite common. I know a lot of people who do yeah. that. Yeah. Just yeah, tune out for, for the other, other times of the year. Yeah. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And, and also as well, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I found that whenever, when I wrestled, I found that whenever I had like kind of a break from it and then I come back, it's like I'd be better. Because I'd, mm. I'd lose the bad habits that I get into, like, and then I just kind of remember the good things. Because obviously that's the things I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it helps people. Like, uh, obviously you've got ring rust and stuff like that, and timing issues to work on. But they have like WWE of all places of NXT, the Performance Center. Like, so lads can work on that, no problem. But yeah, I saw a great idea. What do you think of this? Where it's like, don't have a full off season where it's like take the TV shows off or do anything drastic, like say two hundred five live Raw. Um, but give individual talents like three months off. Yeah, blocks of time. Yeah, that's basically what Jericho does, and his career is fantastic for it. Exactly, like he gives yeah. himself an off season every so often. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, and it, it just makes sense. But unfortunately, I think I think it's gonna happen. I think that's the realistic yeah. view. Where like I think they're just gonna like what I'd love to see, and I don't get why they don't do this, especially when they're so talent heavy now. Is you know the way UFC like they have a big card. And they have, like, y- you'll see Conor McGregor fight, but then you won't see him fight for another six months. Like, when a pro, now you don't have to do that, like, after one fight, but when a program ends and it's like, right, we don't have anything for this guy now, like, have him just go off TV for a while. It'll be mm. like, right, you've got three months off. There you go. You lost your program, so, like, just take a few months off and then you come back and everyone forgot that you lost. You yeah. know what I mean? It's more accountable. There's consequences for not winning then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, loser leaves town matches every few months. Like, yeah, be class. Because I think. I think WXW does an off-season, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. I think think it does think it takes the summer off. 
them? Yeah, they, they, yeah, I've heard something like that. I, d- I, I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, I, I, I think, think they take right. at least six weeks to two months off. Yeah. I think I could be corrected on that. I, no, it is. It's a good idea. New Japan as well, like, they do touring schedules. So it's like, lads, if you only work for New Japan and you're getting paid full time, which is any, they're top, top lads. But they get, like, months off. Like, if they want, they can mm. take bookings, but they get, like, weeks and months off. It makes sense. Like, and it, with what we know about, like, our bodies and health these days, it makes total sense. Fingers crossed it does happen. But first, Westmead WrestleMania. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's way more And important. I don't mean what you're thinking of. <laughs> 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 anyway, guys, uh, that's our hot takes of the week. Let's talk about the in-ring stuff because it's time to talk about the good and the bad. Starting with the bad because it's time for... Say something stupid. Say something stupid. Worst of the week. And at number five, real quick one over from SmackDown and just very spiteful. Uh, a few years ago, uh, now I've never been a fan of AJ Styles ever since I met the guy. He just rubbed me the wrong way. Heard a few things. Then there was the broken necks thing. It's well documented here on Low Blows My Beef for AJ Styles. It became like solidified a couple of years ago when he had a dig at us on Twitter when we tried to give him an award for Indie Match of the Year for his match with Shinsuke Nakamura and he quote tweeted us like a little bitch knowing that he's way more famous than us and is going to like get us basically shit for the day while we're giving him an award and he says, Excuse me, did you just call New Japan on Indie? <laughs> and then like we we got like about a week worth of tweets. Would you me. say you were piled on on Twitter? <laughs> we were piled on, on Twitter. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do you feel about you know people dog piling on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> we were giving Katie shit before the show about <laughs> the one thing she hates is getting people getting piled on on Twitter. Um, but yeah, uh, so he gave out to us for calling New Japan and Indy, and I'm like, look, mate, like. And we actually changed the award because of it, because pe- more people started saying it to us. So I'm like, uh, Indian Japan just sounds awkward. So like, we just said indie, like it's not WWE. You know what we're talking about? And he's like, ah, fair enough. And it, <laughs> I don't know, he's clear as well. I do. I don't like him. <laughs> but then on SmackDown this week, he has a promo with Randy Orton. They're setting up a WrestleMania match, which meh, it's the Orton WrestleMania match. It's Orton versus whoever else doesn't have a match. Um. But they did really well in selling the match because Orton's like, look, you know, while you were re- while you were going off sunning yourself with Dixie Carter, and he got in, they got it like they, it was very like it was such a shoot. It was like they're getting in all the little names and references to just tickle the smart marks balls. Like <laughs> 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 it was like, um, and it was a decent promo because the setting AJ up as like the guy who had to work his way there versus the guy who's like. You know, been there. He was crafted and made for the WWE. He's never known anywhere else. Uh, but just to get petty, AJ Styles in the middle of it starts talking about his time on the Indies. And he's like, I was throwing out two sweets. And don't you slag the Indies because the Indies are the best. And I'm just like, <clears throat> excuse me, AJ Styles. Did you just call New Japan an indie? <laughs> so fuck you, AJ. There you go. This war will never be over until you retire or die. Sorry, um, I got a bit intense there. I, I I can hold a grudge. Moving on. Anyway, let's talk about AJ's old home Impact. I need to calm down. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Impact, right? The Dark War. This was this was um, announced in advance, like a week or two in advance, right? It was a tag team match: Ali and Sue Young against Jordan Grace and Kira Hogan. No, wait, hang on. Do I have that right? I feel Rosemary was in there somewhere. Oh, no. Look. I feel like you could say any four names to us and we wouldn't know the difference anyway. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, but hey, the point is, right, loads of zombies and, and you know, people. Basically, what was on the line, right, if one team won, uh, Rosemary had to go back to the undead realm and was basically owned by James Mitchell. If the other team won, Rosemary got Ali Sol back. So there's quite heavy stakes, right? <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. And they're all spooky characters and James Mitchell's involved and it's called The Dark War. So when I saw that this was happening next week, I was like, yes, we're getting a final deletion. We're getting a, you know, like, they're going to go to the undead realm. They're going to fight each other. They're going to do some mad, you know, cinematic shit. And I was so excited. And it was just a tag match with... <laughs> with red lights, the lights were red. That's that's the only difference. That's <laughs> it was like when Sincara used to have matches and his his yeah. lights were yellow. Oh yeah, and it's like there was nothing. It was just, I mean, it was a fine tag match, but you'd swear <laughs> someone's soul wasn't on the line. Like, you know what they should do? <laughs> a soul on a pole match. <laughs> 
the name. Sold. Sold. Episode eight. It's booked. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet it out later on. I'm giving you no credit. Just so you know. um, oh my god, that's yeah. They should have done that. Just, you know what I mean? But, uh, like why not? Because I mean, it wasn't as if like the match. You know, they went all out. They they did everything they could to protect the soul of Ali or whatever. They did, it was just a match. It was just a, a wrestling match. It was. Which is underwhelming, and oh. I'm disappointed, that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, that is. Like, if you're going to, like, do absolute bollocks, then commit to the absolute bollocks. Yeah, like. I mean, maybe they're going to step it up later on, they're just saving it, but... So who's soul got... Like, oh, sorry, um, Ali's soul is now back in the hands of Rosemary, but Ali's still evil. And they're like, what? The, why is Ali still evil? And it's like, I don't know. Is her soul still evil or something? I don't know. I don't, I'm going to explain next week, I think. I think they need a six-man tag team match to resolve that. I think it was six. I really, I genuinely can't remember who was in it, man. I have the worst memory. I'm it's sorry. Se- it sounds like it's not worth it, right? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, anyway, in number three, the New Japan Cup started this week. And just to explain for anyone who doesn't know, I'm not going to go on for an hour about New Japan. Keen's You're giving, absolutely going to go on for an hour. Keen's giving me that look. You are absolutely. I'm like, right, let's just, let's just get through Keen's this. putting the mic down, getting the Pringles out. <laughs> He's like, we're in for the night, lads. No. Uh, New Japan. Uh, so, the New Japan Cup basically is the resetting part of the year for New Japan. So they have Wrestle Kingdom and then they have their uh, New Year's Dash and New Beginning shows, which are kind of like the Raw after WrestleMania, where it's like the big angles and it's like, right, we'll put the belts on whoever we need it to be on. And the New Japan Cup is where they kind of just are like, right, here's kind of the pecking order for the roster. So, like, and then they'll have people go on runs who are like people you need to watch for who are going to get big matches throughout the year. So Zack Sabre Jr. won it last year, for example. He really didn't have like a major singles push in New Japan but they're like right we've got plans with Zack Sabre Jr. so this is kind of you know your your win and you'll see upsets like you'll see Zack Sabre Jr. I think be Naito, Tanahashi and Ibushi on his way to winning it so he's getting big wins over big names so you'll see stuff like that happen in New Japan because it's not like the G1 where it's like the Royal Rumble and the winner main events the, the, their WrestleMania, Wrestle Kingdom. <clears throat> It's like you get a future title shot. For the, in this case, it's uh, you get a title shot at the Madison Square Garden show against Switchblade Jay White for your IWGP Heavyweight Championship. This is more unfortunate, so I don't want to have a go at them because I see why they did it. Because New Japan was obviously last year, they're worried about the American expansion and they're getting bigger and bigger as a company. But then they had like kind of the AW, wait, AW walkout. And, like, they don't have the Young Bucks, they don't have Kenny Omega, they don't have Cody. They can't bring in a lot of new people because AEW are just, like, signing them up to contracts. So, they're limited in what they can do. But they increased it to 32 people just as they had their main eventers. Like, a lot of their main eventers who'd fill up slots in this tournament. and Because they'll use this to debut guys as well uh, who are go- they're going to use going forward. They, they, they just couldn't do that. So they have like really shit matches that don't sell. Like, and they're like, so the way New Japan are doing shows is because now they've doubled the amount of shows. Like, it, it usually goes on for like eight days, but it's gone on for two and a half weeks now. Um, so they have four tournament matches uh, over like uh, four different nights for the first round. Like, they have four tournament matches on the show, and then the rest is tag matches in a New Japan style. Um, so some of the matches just don't kind of fill out a card. Like, they had Yoshi Hashi against Nakanishi, who's, like, an, an, an one of the older wrestlers. You have uh, Honma against Taichi. You have Mikey Nichols, who's, like, debuting. I don't know him. I, do you know him? He's your man from NXT that got released. Okay. So the, remember TM61? TM oh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah he's either, I think. Uh, yeah, you could be right, because pr- I knew he looked familiar. Yeah, the, the name... The name yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's him. So what? Not Shane Thorne, the other one. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> like well, I'll give you a spoiler for this because who cares about this match? He's fighting Okada next. Oh yeah, and Rocky Romero was bigging him up on the mic. So obviously they've got plans for him, and he was pretty good. Yeah, but they had him wrestling Hikuleo, who is Haku's youngest son. So he's like the Gorilla Destiny's younger brother, and he's just a big tall lad who's really <laughs> green. And it was just a really shit match. And that it's sounds like, amazing. <laughs> oh, it's not like it's not even ironically good. It's just like <laughs> it's just this should not be like a feature match. Yeah, but do you know me? Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it, no, it's not. It's not. It's not even good. At, like shit. Like so shit. It's good. It's it was just, just less than average. It was just, yeah, it was just like, they shouldn't be on a New Japan show. They had Lance, Arms, uh, Lance Armstrong. That's the second week in a row. <laughs> yeah. That's a draw. <laughs> Lance Archer against uh, Hanare as well, which is just like two big lads. 
banger. <laughs> it, it really wasn't. It, re- it was just two big slow lads. And I know big lad wrestling's in like all the rage now, but it's just like, no, this is, <laughs> this is not Walter. Like this is very does, far. From does that. Lance Archer still spit on people? Yeah, a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he has uh, that going for So, yeah, I mean, that's sorry. Right, just suppose. a lot, like, again, it's starting to get better now, and there's some, I won't give you spoilers if you want to follow it, and I will have the matches that you need to check out um, if you're scanning through it and don't have time. And I, you shouldn't watch all of these shite matches. There's a lot of shit <laughs> in the first round. But um, it, it gets better from here because it's down to the normal 16 people. So it, it, the, the card is starting, it, the tournament is starting to formulate. It's just a really shit time to make it 32 people when their roster is thinner than ever because they have young lions in matches and like young lions come out there they're like if you've never seen them they're just in plain <laughs> black gear and they all come out to the same entrance music it's like the WWE jobber music do you remember it's like David Flair's team and then they jog out to the ring and it's just like do they say come on no, they oh. don't even do that because they're like jobbers. <laughs> oh. But they have jobbers in the tournament and then they've really old lads who are like, you're not going to win. Like, you might win one match, but they're not winning because why would they? I've, I've been uh, just a random New Japan question. Are Lance Archer and Dave Boyd Smith sort of thing? Yes, Killer Elite Squad. And they're in Suzuki Gun, is it? Suzuki Gun, there. Okay, cool. They're, but they're both individuals. In the, see, they're splitting up tag teams and all to fill it out. And, like, some of the tag team wrestlers are winning singles matches just to kind of That's get all right. it. That's alright. I don't it, mind that. It, no, it's not the worst worst thing in the world but when it's all that when it's all filler and then they have like some really good matches which we will get it uh, it hasn't yeah. been all bad but it's just unfortunate on their behalf anyway in at number two talk to me about the bad from fast lane so the main thing that was bad about fast lane is the fact that it took four hours of my life <laughs> it's a good thing i'm injured because i would not have finished this show otherwise yeah. like it was a slog yeah like and the worst thing about it was like They'd advertised a lot of matches and then they added matches and segments as well that didn't need to be there. So like they did this whole shtick with Kofi where like he's waiting on Vince and stuff like that and then like Vince comes out and tells him, Oh yeah, yeah, you can be you can have the title match, like go on out to the ring. Now, now, go, go. So he goes out to the ring and it's a swerve and it's actually a handicap match against the bar instead of the title match. Mm. Which is like grand and like, you know, we'll we'll get Co- Kofi sympathy. Except it went on for a fucking age. Yeah. Like, and he didn't get any hopes, and he's just there getting the shit out of him, and you're just watching the clock go by, watching his life leave his body. And it just, like, it got a this is boring chant, and yeah. in fairness it was, like, it was, like, a bad kind of heat. And, like, Elias did four segments, Yeah, I think, on Fast Lane, and I like Elias, but that could have been condensed. Mm. And then you had a Lacey Evans walk through, and, like, it's just a lot of unnecessary shit that could have been put on Raw. And then, this is my favourite thing. Lads who aren't booked on the card, but are just hanging around backstage in their gear. So, like, they have a run-in. So, like, during the last Elias segment, um, AJ Styles did a run-in, and then Randy Orton did a run-in, and the two lads are in full gear. (laughs) And, like, this is about, like, two-thirds through the pay-per-view, and I'm like... Were well, you just hanging out backstage, like in in your knickknacks, like hoping to do a run in? Like I just hate it. It just kills it for me. Like yeah. the only one who done it properly was Natalia. So they did the thing with Beth Phoenix, and then Natalia did her run in, and she was in like a tracksuit and runners. And I'm like, yeah, good for you, Natalia, yeah. because that's how you should be watching a show. You're not booked on backstage. Like <laughs> the weird thing about AJ as well. I feel like I'm having a go at AJ a lot, but no, it wasn't his fault. But the weird thing about that was he was on the kickoff show. So I was watching this live, and he was on the kickoff show in normal clothes, in civvies. So it means he got changed for his <laughs> running that he couldn't possibly have anticipated would happen. <laughs> yeah. It's just no. And the same with Randy Orton, because he did a run-in on someone doing a run-in. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, obviously as well. I never thought of it that with the RKO's out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> yeah. For that kind of thing, he'd need to anticipate it. He'd need to be, like, hanging around, because he's always there really quick. So, yeah. like, if you think about it in kayfabe only, like, he'd have to be, like... I'm just going to stand here and hope that someone is in the perfect position at one stage in this show. <laughs> Actually, and he was the opposite side to hard cam, yeah. so he must have ran around the ring to slide in <laughs> yeah. to do the RKO. Like, maybe he's just really good at anticipating it. As soon as he's seen AJ, he's like, right, the way the angles are, he's going to be facing that way in five minutes, so I'm just going to fucking sprint. <laughs> well, yeah, no, you can sense the blood in the water. You just avoid <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. You know what I hope it is, though? I oh. hope he was in full clothes in the crowd. <laughs> 
<laughs> that he saw the opportunity, like Whoa. rip off tracksuit <laughs> buttons. No, like not even rip it off. Like it's Randy Orton. He's creepy. He just starts taking it off slowly. <laughs> yeah. Just removes his belt, throws it on the ground. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> so that was the bad from Vaseline. <laughs> we will talk about the good. There was. Do you know what? I did like how they were ambitious and they tried different stuff on a pay per view. They did, but. Yeah, it added to it. This there was, was just so much. Yeah. yeah, there was another match they added as well. Oh shit, there was a second. They added match. Mustafa Ali. Is, is that what you're thinking? No, of? they added him to that match. Did they not? No, oh, maybe maybe they did. The U.S. title, the four way. It was supposed to be Rey Mysterio against Andrade on the pre-show, and it became randomly a four way with Samoa Joe defending. Oh, I didn't no. even know that happened. It'll probably come <laughs> to me later. Right, fair enough. We'll we'll get back to it. In at number one, this is disappointing that it was this. Um, but he's then Triple H's promo on Raw. Started really promising. I'm not going to lie. I don't like the way they're positioning Triple H as the, as the, as the face here. Like, because the crowd clearly just wants a chance for Batista. Um, but uh, they had Triple H come out and be like, come on, let's do this. Again, Batista came out with, like, security in tow. And, like, it, like he had, like, there was a barricade between him and Triple H. Batista looking looking like a Hollywood star as well. Like, his suit was fucking slick. And it's like, right, this is a guy who left a wrestler and came back a global superstar. I got it straight away what they were going for. So I'm like, right, I'm feeling good about this. I really like Batista. Anytime he's been on, because uh, he's got all this success now, anytime he's been on the mic recently, he's been, like, really loose and just doesn't give a fuck. So, like, yeah, let's do this. Um... <laughs> I think the problem with this was they're like, right, it's Batista and Triple H, two of the most experienced lads. Like, lads, we're not going to give you a script. They really should have. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad because they just had like, right, so what we do, uh, Batista just be like, you know what I want? I want a WrestleMania rematch. I'm actually going to tell a story. Um, I'm going to drop an, I'm going to drop names here. Um, but <laughs> I remember, so Seamus, I did his, me and him did our first ever radio interview, media interview together uh, for a radio station in Blanche. Now, Seamus, excellent on the mic now, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. He was actually in fighting with my family, did a cameo in it, and he's really fucking good. Like, he's even a good actor now as well. So, no, none to take away from him. But at the start, he wasn't very confident with mic skills and stuff, and I was more confident with that stuff. So, he's like, will you just write some notes for me to say? And then I'm like, yeah, grand. And then, like, the problem is, and you'll get this from trainees and stuff, when you give a trainee, like, bullet points, and you're like, in theory, you want them to flesh out each bullet point, but, like, a trainee will sometimes just blast through all the bullet points in one sentence. And they're like, I'm going to win your match this Sunday. I'm the best. The fans can kiss my ass. And then it's like, yeah, you're supposed to, like, that's a three-minute promo. (laughs) And you just said everything. That's kind of what they did with Dave Batista here. And and it's what happened with Seamus as well, where literally he just read all the bullet points. And then it's like, all right, I guess I'm doing a lot of talking for the match that isn't the main event. (laughs) um, But Batista as well here... um, the, again, they, they, they had a loose outline where it's like, but he's just, but he's, you just say, like, give me what I want, and we'll work with that. But And then Triple H is like, no, I'm not giving you a damn thing. You don't deserve it. And what happened was, Batista got through that and then had nothing else to say. So Triple H had no other comeback. So it was just two 50-year-old men, one saying, give me what I want, Hunter, and Hunter saying, I'm not giving you a goddamn thing. Give me what I want. I'm not giving you anything. Give me what I want! Give me what I want! <laughs> and then, like, he, like, he realizes he's saying the same thing, so he just, like, kind of calms himself, and he's like, Give me what I want! Give me what I want! <laughs> <laughs> it's just that for three minutes! And then, one of, and then Triple H is like, because, like, the problem was, they had this outline in their head, but they never actually worked to what he wanted, and then he's like, You know what I want, Hunter! And then he's like, What do you want? Like, Hunter, like Triple H, oh, sorry, I'm saying Hunter now, because <laughs> Batista was saying it. Triple H is like, I have to feed him his fucking line because he's after forgetting. He's like, what is it you want, Dave? <laughs> and he's like, and this is like five minutes into the promo at this stage. And he's like, I want to match with you at WrestleMania. And he said it in the way the crowd were meant to go, yeah, but we got it by then. Because <laughs> they're like, he must be talking about a match. Already. He can't mean anything else. And then, yeah, they, it just wasn't good. They just didn't have any notes. And it was just two lads screaming at each other after a while. And then I'm just like, oh, it was really long. And like, I, was, I was sad because I really wanted, like, 
I'm not r- ruling this out by any means. I've full faith. After seeing Batista and how good he is at Guardians, I believe that man can do absolutely anything. He's a comic actor now, which I never would have thought he was possible of. So I believe in Batista. I believe this match is going to be just fine. But this promo just didn't work. They didn't have any plan. And it, it, it showed. Sometimes scripts are necessary. Or at least just a bit of a script. Uh, but anyway, that's the bad from the week. Let's talk about the good. Because ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... Best of the week. In at number six, real quickly from New Japan Cup, because I've already spoke about it. The matches you want to watch out for, I'm not going to give any spoilers here. Uh, I'll give the dates as well, because that's the way you find out on New Japan World. And it's well worth getting... You should have New Japan World anyway if you don't. Um, it's well worth it, like especially when you get bulk weeks like this. You're getting shows nearly every day. Uh, Chase, uh, Chase Owens against Juice Robinson on the first night on the 8th of March. You have Okada against Michael Elgin on the 9th of March. I'm not a Michael Elgin fan. Like Even before I read his text messages, I was not a Michael Elgin fan. I don't care if he hits the big elbow. I don't care. <laughs> he just like seems to stand around the ring a lot. He just seems to stand in the center and just beat up whoever's there and they try and chop him and beat him down. And he's just like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then it's like, am I going to hit the big elbow? I don't give a rat's mate. You do the same match every time. But Okada got a great match out of him. It's well worth watching. That is on the 9th of March. And one you don't need to tell me about but unless uh, if you knew what was happening. But if you weren't aware... Ibushi wrestled Naito on the 10th of March, so definitely check that out. It was as good as you want it to be. There are the matches you need to check out from the first round. If that's all you watch in the first round, that's all you need to watch. The second round got underway this morning. Uh, there's going to be a show on Thursday morning as well, and on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, there's only two matches per show that you need to watch now, because they're down to the last eight matches. So they do two matches over four shows. They are really stretching it out. You don't need to watch the tag. So that's about an hour of watching wrestling every day if you want to keep up with it uh, we will report back next week on the stuff you need to keep an eye out for anyway in at number five talk to me about shine yeah shine. so um i was started to watch shine i used to i used to watch it all the time when i had flow slam if any of you remember fucking flow slam uh <laughs> yeah and then obviously i got taken off there and i, I just went i think it was like a year and a half or something of watching it and i caught up on it over the last like month or so and Basically, long story short, Lufisto was the champion. It's an all-women's promotion. Uh, it's a sister promotion of Evolve. And Lufisto was the champion for ages. And then, unfortunately, she got sick. She had to relinquish the title. But then they had a tournament to crown a new champion. And this is like... We're going about three shows back with this one, yeah? Um, so, for a start, like, give a bit of background on Shine for anyone who doesn't know. Just give us, like, ten seconds. What's the story with it? For people who've never I, I don't seen Shine. Uh, uh, Shine's an all-women's promotion. All-women's promotion. Sister it, promotion of Evolve. Yeah. Um, that, that's all you really need to know. Oh, I just said that. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> that's why I was like, that's why I was like, wait, do I repeat what I said? <laughs> that's my bad. I have, I have the Liverpool match on in front of me. <laughs> I zoned out for a second and didn't realize I zoned out. <laughs> that works for me. So now, now for those of you that, that aren't aware, it's an all women's promotion <laughs> and it's just promotional <laughs> love. So if you don't know that at the end of this episode, <laughs> well, you're as bad as me. Yeah. <laughs> but um. So yeah, that's, ba- that's basically the backstory. I don't think there's anything else you need to know feud-wise or storyline-wise. But yeah, Lufisto had to relinquish the title and there was a tournament. The crowned new champion and guess who won it? Guess who won it? Guess who won the tournament? Okay. Guess... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking deadly. Sienna is the champion. She's the queen. She's running around with the fucking title everywhere and it's like... This is the best. This is the best promotion ever. I like <laughs> and it's just because of that. I, I like that's that's it. That's just like my favorite now. Nice. Um, and if Phoenix Wrestling are listening, um, <laughs> and you're deciding, you know, any top unsigned wrestlers you want to bring in, Sienna, top of that list. Alison K, the Shine Champion. Uh, she's fighting Mercedes Martinez in I think it's the 16th of March or something like that. So. I'm going to be watching that, can't wait. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. I'll be up for Alice and Kay against Raven Creed. Oh, be man, oh, class, man. Play- Phoenix. I know you're listening. Someone, someone's listening. <laughs> they are listening. Someone's listening. Do it. Do it. Go It'll on. Just- Remember day. the trick. You have to say it so they think it's their idea and then they book it. That's the booking trick. Okay. They plant it. Alice and okay. Kay, like, I don't know. If any, like, you know, promo- promoters out there who like to take a gamble and like to, you know, do things that are a risk, you know, any brave promoters, you know, <laughs> You know, not, not like if OTT did it, it'd be too predictable. You know, Five Factory tend to focus on Irish talent. I just don't know. I can't think of anyone else who uh, 
It'd be pretty courageous that. to bring over a wrestler like that that doesn't it, have it'd like It'd be the, courageous, exactly you know, the word, you know what I mean? But, uh... Phoenix, just do it, please. <laughs> 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 we'll work on this hint dropping uh, as we go on. In at number four, talk to me about what's going on with NXT UK. So, two things from NXT. Actually, one of them's only hoping to happen tonight in NXT. But they've finally signed the best female wrestler in the UK, Kaylee Ray. Yeah. Like... How has no one picked her up before now? Mm. Like, I, I don't understand it. She is genuinely probably the best female wrestler in the world. Um, like, I've been lucky enough to wrestle her a few times, and I've always learned something from her because she is just so good. Like, every kind of match she can do. She can break down matches. She can break down characters. She can break down everything. Some of the girls are struggling on NXT UK. Like, just... True no fault her own. They're just very inexperienced being yeah. in that position. She is exactly the right person to have there working with them every single week. So I am super excited to see her on it. It's mental how like how long that took because again, yeah, you're thinking like, right, we need to get some experienced heads in here. And yeah. we're WWE so we can get anyone. Was it World of Sport? Was she so in the world? She of did sport? World of Sport, she did both May Young Classics. Right, so there's no really. Did she do? Actually, did she do the second one? She was definitely on the first one. I don't think she was on the second one. No, so I'm maybe sorry. it was a world of sport thing that led to it being yeah. a bit delayed. Maybe there was contract. Yeah, well, so. she did the TNA boot camp, the original first one, yeah. with uh, the blossoms and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, no, so not the original one, the second series with the blossoms. Like she's been everywhere. She's yeah. done Japan. She's done America. Like I just don't. I can't believe it took them this long to sign her. Well, I'm so happy though, genuinely, because like, up until now, it's like. There's, there, there's good wrestlers in NXT UK, but like for me personally, there's just no one who I'm like, that's my favorite. You know, like Tony Storm, great wrestler, but it's not like, I, I, I don't feel sort of like, oh fuck yeah, like that, that's my, that's my pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like Katie Ray is like, uh, you know, with the exception of Sienna, obviously. Um, <laughs> Yeah, one of my favourites. I can't wait now. I hope. I really hope she gets the NXT UK title. I think it's going to be great. I'd say, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of time now at this stage. Like, yeah, it's Tony still has it, yeah? Tony still has it, yeah. yeah so oh, that's that's so much. Oh, that's a and then, you, like, you've got Viper in there. Her and Viper have had class yeah. matches all the time. Matches with Ginny, matches with Nina Samuels. Like, now it's actually looking like a like a, a proper, like, heated up division. Like, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's going to be whopper. Exciting times. Um, the other thing is Devlin and Banks. I had their big blow off match mm. their um no it wasn't a false count anywhere match or was it was it last I only watched it like an hour no ago bird, last man standing it was one of those <laughs> yeah 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 I think it was it yeah. was false count anywhere I watched it last week oh yeah no well, it was false count anywhere because <laughs> the finish was a Spanish fly off the apron through a table onto the floor oh which is where he pinned them shit. yeah so that's one of the things I loved about the match is there wasn't loads of crazy bumps in it mm. But it was just really well worked to that big final one. So once they finally went through the table, that was the finish. Right. One of my pet hates is when like people whip out like massive weapon spots and stuff, and yeah. then it's not the finish, and then they hit like their regular finish, and mm. that's the that's the end. I hate that. So this is really well done. That happened on Raw this week, actually. And now, don't get me wrong, this was kind of cool for kind of for for what they're going for. Drew McIntyre. Um, and Dean Ambrose ended up, I think it was a false count anywhere match as well. The yeah. event was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they ended up doing a thing where they're like, they're throwing each other. Drew, Drew kicked the shit out of them. They're really building up Drew. I think it's, I think it's him and Roman at WrestleMania. I think that's oh. what they're doing. It. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Although, or they could do that's something around, so or they could do something around the IC title because they put it on Bobby Lashley this week. RIP Finn Balor's reign. Um, but they put it on Bobby Lashley this week, so it could, like, they could have all the lads in that feud who aren't Seth Rollins kind of in that match or whatever. But anyway, they're building up Drew really strong, and then uh, his thing is, I'm going to take out every member of the Shield. So he's probably going to beat Roman at Mania. Oh. <laughs> and then if Rollins has the belt, that's setting up your next pay-per-view. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, this was where he took out Dean, and I genuinely thought, is this the last we see of Dean? Are they writing Dean off TV now if he is, in fact, leaving? Because the, now there's question marks about that. Um but then, yeah, they had a big, f- they had a big brawl where they're like throwing each other into tables and this and that and the other. And then the end, now the end was sick because Drew basically wrapped him in a gate uh, at the top of a staircase and then gave him a claymore kick down the stairs. So that was sick. And it's like, holy shit, lads, you've given me a holy shit moment on WWE. But then Dean climbed back up on the stage and Drew hit him with a normal claymore kick. And I'm like, why is that the biggest move? Yeah. <laughs> it's like having a big hardcore match and end it with a like small package or something like yeah. that. Like it's yeah. like, why well, was? I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know that it was. Uh, no, sorry, like I I didn't watch it, but I knew that it was like a really you know sick ending along those lines because I, I woke up to like text being like, "Fucking Drew, I fucking hate him. I'm burning my Drew McIntyre shirt." It's bullshit. And I was like, ah. Oh. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wake up every like Tuesday? Yeah, day? Tuesday morning, I wake up to the, with a response of some sort. Uh, yeah, it, no, but like, good old corporate Nicholas. This is gonna, this is gonna be an ugly, ugly res- road to WrestleMania. I mean, <laughs> for I'm, you and your texts. <laughs> I, I'm quite. I mean, I, I'm quite a fan of Drew McIntyre. I love Drew. If Drew versus Roman, I'm just saying. But yeah, no, sorry, I, I kind of took away from your point. That's kind of what they did well, where they built up to that spot, and that yeah. was the finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely, I must check that out. Uh, in at number three, one from SmackDown Live. Well, two from SmackDown Live. One really small thing, I'm such a mark for this. When people do stuff off uh, kickout, or like a pinfall, when they when they add to a pinfall, because we're so used to seeing just like hook the leg, you know, do this, do that. It's just kind of a default, so I love when people change it up. Daniel Bryan, and, like, if I still trained, I would spend, like, weeks just, like, messing around with ideas like this. So, like, for example, think about it when someone kicks out, right? Like, if they throw their shoulder up, they're giving an arm. You know what I mean? So why not take that and do something with that? Daniel Bryan, like, I, I can't remember who he was facing. It was, uh, sorry, it was Bryan and Rowan against Owens and Mustafa Ali. Uh, and uh, Mustafa Ali kicked out. Brian immediately got him in a submission. So he kicked his shoulder up. Brian hooked underneath the arm and then hooked his leg and bent it backwards and then got them into a six submission hold right from the kick out. Like the way his body the sort because his body turned into him. So it's like, oh my God, that's amazing. Then they cut to a fucking break. And I'm like, no, I want to see where that went. No, that was the best part of wrestling. That was the best bit of wrestling on the show. Um, but what I want to talk about mainly from SmackDown was the Vince and Kofi Kingston promo because I said this on Twitter the other night and it's like, it is, we give WWE shit a lot of the time. I was just talking about creative earlier on. Give them credit where it's due. They've made a Daniel Bryan situation, literally. They put literal parallels in between Daniel Bryan and this. In a feud where Daniel Bryan is the champion now and a heel and they have a Daniel Bryan situation, and WWE made this from nothing. With the whole Daniel Bryan thing, the criticism against it was, yeah, we got really into it, but like WWE didn't want that. They wanted you to get behind Kofi here. They wanted to build up to WrestleMania. I really enjoyed on Fastlane. Sorry if I'm, I'm taking a point from you, but I really enjoyed on Fastlane how they got the fans to turn on the match that didn't have Kofi because that's a really brave move. They're dumping on a WWE title pay-per-view match, which they knew was going to happen. They knew fans were going to cheer for Kofi. That's why they took him out of the match and just to build up the WrestleMania match even more. Um, so I'm loving what they're doing. They had like a Vince McMahon, Kofi Kingston confrontation on SmackDown. Um, and it started off with Kofi just doing his like, <laughs> it was like he was doing a fucking, uh, like, it's like he was doing a charity face where it's like, Tree Kofi's died last month. <laughs> Do you want Kofi Kingston to be next? And he's just like, hmm. <laughs> like staring at Vince. But then like, Big E and Xavier Woods do great promos, and they're just like, we do everything for you. We, like, sell all your merch. We go to every business meeting. We travel across the world. If you want us to do a talk show, we do a talk show. If you want us to act stupid on Raw, we act stupid. We never ask for anything in return. We're not looking for handouts. We, you need to give Kofi this because he deserves it. Vince McMahon's like, nobody deserves anything in this world. Nobody deserves anything. We earn it. I didn't deserve to own the WWE. I worked my ass off to own the WWE. Stop looking for handouts. Kofi turns around and he's like uh, eventually like the lads get hot I can't remember what what led to them getting hot but the lads get hot and Kofi's like don't get fired on my behalf this is all I'm going to say Vince there are things you don't know about me do you know I've never been trick or treating with my child do you know that my child had their first or that one of my kids had their first tooth out the other night and I couldn't be there on Sunday because I was wrestling on fast lane for you I couldn't be there to see their face in the morning when they realised the tooth fairy came I don't get any of that, and I like, and he's like, I don't get to do any of that because I work my ass off for you, and I have done for eleven years. I've never asked you for anything, and I'm not asking you for anything now. All I want is an opportunity because I did beat the WWE champion. Why would you not give it to me? It was like, go watch the promo. It was proper, like, because he got had that bit of realism in it, and it's like, man, oh, like I was never into it because I was always like. I feel they're just kind of forcing this on me. And I admire how it's working, but I don't feel connected to it myself. Now I'm connected to it because I'm like, fuck, I believe all those stories. Like, that's he just drew from his real life a shit time he doesn't get to spend with his kids. Like, 
for Vince McMahon. Fuck it, he does deserve this. <laughs> Give him a son. And then Vince made him, he's got to wrestle a gauntlet match against like Orton and Samoa Joe and The Bar and Eric Rowan next week to see if he gets a title shot. <laughs> are you, are you going to mention it? Are you going to mention the best part of SmackDown though? Well, oh, okay. I'll, no, this is for you. It's one on the Bayern Liverpool by the way. Oh, okay. Rowan <laughs> getting a pin, <laughs> pinfall victory in the main event of, uh, what, of SmackDown. Like, what in the main event? It wasn't. Well, what match came after it? There, the, the promo. Was there was no. Oh, I had this debate with somebody the other day. <laughs> the match that goes on last, the main event. It doesn't matter if there's a segment afterwards. The, it, it's the last match. It's the main event. But if it's the contract yeah. signing on, that's the main event. To yeah, me. that's, that's not main event. Main event. It's not even a match. No, nobody, nobody can win a contract signing. Because well, it's they the can. Last, it's the last thing on the show. That's the so. Main what, event. It's not the main event. Will you, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but also, also, this is something I completely forgot to mention. Right from well, not just fast lane, but due to be in general. So I haven't, I haven't been watching. Nobody told me Eric Rowan has a forehead choke slam. This is the funniest shit. Yeah, ever. I actually only noticed that on Sunday. That's we, the funniest. We shit. assumed you knew. I haven't been watching. It's Rowan. He's in. Like you need I, to watch. I this. didn't want to bring it up because I thought you'd make fun of me. That's the. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. I love it. This is the best finisher of all time. A forehead. He doesn't. Does he could grab him by the throat? Why grab him by the throat when you can just grab him by the forehead? It's like he did. It's like he did it by accident. I was like, oh, this works. So it's like, he just grabs him by the forehead. And like, what are you doing? And he just slams <laughs> him down to the ground. It's so cool. Like, but, and especially when it's a smaller wrestler, because he's massive, he's an absolute unit. Do you see, see his tattoos as well? Oh my god, man. Fast lane. <laughs> Fastlane was great because he absolutely made that main event. He just <laughs> looks permanently confused. He no, no, he doesn't. He looks and and Nicholas looks like an orc from Lord of the Rings. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't look like a lo- an orc. He looks like a beautiful Viking. And <laughs> I just uh, he's my favorite wrestler. You, you picked the wrong time to stop watching WWE. This is peak Eric Rowan. Yeah, I'm really actually is. genuinely do try like to watch SmackDown because it's just. It's just good. You may never get this again. Like you need to enjoy this period while it lasts. I'm really. Well, I'm, what I'm most excited for is when uh, Brian finally gives Rowan his title shot for all the help that he's been giving Brian. And that's Rowan how it works. Yeah. Uh, what? That that's usually how it works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's gonna be a nice, peaceful kind of. You know what? Well, you've, you've given me the, all this help, so here's your title shot, and it'll be like thanks. I know. I know. We're joking here, ironically and stuff, but like, I'm not, I wasn't that, being that's ironic. gonna be a story. Like, there's gonna be the Virgil Dibiase thing. Like, you know, even the whole patronizing. He's my intellectual superior. Thing. That's know, not patronizing. He's his intellectual superior. Uh, Rowan gets a title shot if it is, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. he can have a peaceful title <laughs> shot. He'll be like, here, here's a respectful <laughs> title shot, and he'll respectfully win, and it's gonna be great. Look, we're talking about it anyway, so let's talk about the good from past Um Yeah, I know I gave out a lot about it, but there actually was a lot of good from Fastlane. Um, so much of it that there was so good and bad. <laughs> so much of it. Um, like. I've mentioned before, The Miz is my favourite wrestler. Yeah. I am obsessed with him, and he was so fucking good at fast lane. Like, he has just seamlessly transitioned to that proper baby face. Like, and uh, the thing I love about it is, like, he's not a flashy wrestler, mm. but when he wrestles face, he'll throw in that one or two more flashy things. And, like, I love when a wrestler adds a new move when the stakes are higher. And, like, ironically, his new move was jumping from the top rope to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> it was caught flawlessly. <laughs> but, like, it just fitted so well with the story. And, like, the commentators played it up brilliantly. Mm. They're like, oh, his dad's there. You know, it's a big match. You know, he wants this big moment. Um, yeah, and he was just deadly. And then the Shane turn afterwards was so well done. Mm. This is probably the only shenanigans I didn't predict last week. Everything else I predicted last week was wrong. Yeah. I was completely wrong. But like that was a great heel turn, and if we get Shane and Miz at WrestleMania, I am okay with it. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the Becky shenanigans? What did you think of the way they did that? I think it went on too long. Especially this is what I was thinking of. Um, wasn't that they added a match? I was thinking that was very similar to the Kofi thing. Just a long beat down that kind of lost a bit of sympathy, and then Ronda comes out, and I don't know why she's such a gorgeous woman. But whatever makeup they put on her when she does a pay-per-view makes her look like a drag queen the next morning. <laughs> and it's, it's awful. Like, and then she, I don't know whether it was just me not paying attention or the angler was shot at, but she came out and Becky's in the submission on the ground. I thought she punched her in the vagina. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, because she just kind of stood over and, like, punched down, like, which is a really <laughs> weird angle. But whatever way I was watching it, it, like, I did not see her catch her in the face. I just seen her punch down, and I was like, what the 
<laughs> Straight mad shot. Yeah. What a way to get to WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> just the way she strutted back up then, like like that she's like the power just, walk. She's like, oh shit, you just hit her in the badge. <laughs> right. Act like you meant to act like you meant to <laughs> I like I like what they've done and convinced me that I want a triple tre mm. and that I like that they think like, oh, Rhonda wants Becky, yeah. like she wants her in the match. But like I don't know, I think it could have been a little bit better done. It could have been a lot smoother, especially, like, the, the weird camera angle as well, like, because, like, you just see Becky in the thing, and you don't see, like, there's no camera cutting to Ronda. You just see someone really small just strutting out really quickly, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like, oh, shit, that's Ronda. <laughs> I thought that was a mistake. Like, <laughs> it was really weird. Uh, what, uh, another good thing you like, this is all in caps in the little dog. Oh, yeah, I got excited. Yeah. The shield. <laughs> like, how was Nicola? Was she okay? Oh, oh, man. I was actually <laughs> thinking of her when they were making their entrance. <laughs> oh, that whole match, she, yeah. <laughs> it was... Well, I mean, she was happy, so that's good. It wasn't even like a five-star classic, but it was yeah. just a fact. It was all the lads together again. Yeah. And like seeing Roman get in and do all his big moves like and like the lads bumping really well. Baron Corbin has gotten a lot better. Because yeah. there was this thing where it looked like uh, Roman was geeing up for a big dive over the top rope. I didn't even see Baron Corbin sliding and hitting big, the big deep six. Like It was, it was whopper. But uh, I love that match because um, they just seemed like they were having a laugh. Like, at one stage, this was probably a mess up in some way, like, just, like, they weren't in the right positions, and I'd have to look back at it to figure out who was supposed to be where. But at one stage, Rollins, like, was on the announce table, and he just leapt off, like, for no reason, and just <laughs> did a lucha roll. <laughs> he just was like, yahoo! <laughs> and it was just like, they're just having a fucking laugh. <laughs> like, if it really is their last match together as the Shield, like, yeah, they probably just were like, fuck it. Yeah. Like, it was fucking awesome. I, wa- I wa- and like ultimately when it was like Becky and Charlotte weren't the main, I was like, ah, come on, like let them have it. Like you need to test run WrestleMania. But then when you saw how that finished, and then when you saw what they had that, uh, like for the Shield, it was like, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I'd much rather like the Shield than than Ronda's badge punch to be honest. <laughs> like ending the pay per view. Here's the question: We really want to see the women's. Um, match go on last at Mania and we think that's the way it's like it'd be weird not to do it it'd be weird to pivot out but WWE can be weird do you remember like randomly the week of WrestleMania now it made sense afterwards where they were like oh Roman Reigns Undertaker is the main event and we're like what like it's just like well, that's not the biggest match now again it made sense because they did the whole Taker leaving his gear in the ring and shit afterwards but say you have Becky winning that's a big moment or you have, after Roman Reigns has come back from leukemia and Dean Ambrose is leaving, Seth Rollins beats Brock Lesnar to win the Universal title back and you have the Shields do kind of a, a curtain call moment in the ring and like have that, what's the better end to WrestleMania? You, uh, like For me, the Shield is the better ending. I'd like Becky more because uh, bias, but like... For me, that's a better ending, and I'm like, but at the same time, you can't take it away from the women now because, like, that's been yeah. the big thing. It's it's tough though, isn't it? I think they can only put the women last if Becky's winning. Yeah. So I think if it doesn't go on last, Becky's not winning. Yeah, that's good. I think good it's show. the big thing. Like they can't close it with, with Charlotte or Ronda. Yeah. They can't. So, what's the other big title match again? Uh, Brian against Kofi. That won't go last. No, that won't go last. No. <laughs> <laughs> you like you tried to give it like some sort of like well maybe no. <laughs> no it, won't, it won't like it. <laughs> it was it, it was a grand like Fastlane was a grand show. It was just there was a lot. Of it. it was a lot, but like they did do a lot of WrestleMania set up and like yeah. it just shows the depth of their roster that like people like Randy and AJ and stuff were reduced to run ins and yeah. Nakamura was on the pre show and like a lot of these lads don't don't have big matches at Mania, mm. but it was just too much. Like, WrestleMania is going to be a slog, especially when you consider, like, the part-timer matches like yeah, Batista and Triple H and stuff. And there's a lot of matches already, which we will discuss in a second. But first, in at number one, we've been a couple of weeks without discussing this. Have you guys seen Fighting With My Family yet, or is it just me? Uh, I've seen it. I You've saw seen it, like, it? a week ago, yeah. I, uh, like, Katie, you haven't seen it no, yet? No, not yet. Katie, you would love it. You, like, like, particularly as someone who runs a training school, you would love it. I guarantee you, there's a, like the first half hour or so. Were you sitting there? I was just smiling for the first hour, half hour or so. It's a really good movie. I was shitting myself. Now, I'm not going to turn around and be like, Oscars next year. Yeah, it's great. It's like, it's not. I like when we all, I don't know about you guys, but when I heard this movie and the premise, I was like, 
Ah, uh, is that a movie? Is there like, is there enough to kind of make that? Like, I didn't, I never thought of Paige's career as a movie, especially if you're just covering up until like the AJ Lee match. I, I don't really know that. Like, I've seen the documentary. I didn't think there was a movie in it, especially a comedy. Like, um, there is enough. It's a good movie. It's like a real gentle comedy. It's not like a Anchorman kind of stepbrothers. You're laughing every 10 seconds comedy. But there is genuine laughs in it. There's funny shit where like Vince Vaughn just starts making fun of lads doing promos and stuff like that. Um, it's really faithful to wrestling though. That's what I love. Like the bits at the start where they're setting up like WAW and like the training school aspect of it and the like uh, the trainee, even the trainees that they have, like you know what I mean, lads on the street and stuff like that. The blind guy who goes training with them. Oh, like he's like one of my favorite people ever. Now that story just had me like that, like. I was so, like, and I, I don't want to give it away for anyone who doesn't know it, but, like, it was just a little subplot they had, and I'm like, that's one of my favorite characters in movies ever, like, that, it was fucking fantastic. But also because, like, this is why I think you'll love it, because, like, it does bring in that side, that side of, in, in any kind of training school like that, it's like, you have kind of all these different mix of characters, like children at a certain age, but they're all characters in their own right. And it just gets that stuff so right. Even the likes of NXT, like it's so detailed for no reason, like where it's just like they're doing kind of, they get into a bit, like a big part of the film is about receipts and about like, you know, should you hit someone if they mess up during a move? It's really in depth for a wrestling movie, especially one trying to explain it to the people. Um, the performances are all great. Like, I didn't think I'd be able to take Cersei Lannister and Soraya Knight. Like, I, I've worked for the Knights before. And, like, I've, so I've met Soraya. And, like, she helped us plan out a match there. Like, so I'm like, Cersei Lannister is someone I met just breaks my brain. <laughs> but she's brilliant at it. Like, she, like, within two seconds, I'm just like, I forget she's Cersei. And she's so good. Like, um... And then you have uh, Nick Frost as Ricky Knight. Absolutely brilliant. Again, Ricky Knight's someone that if you know British wrestling, you're, you know him and you know his gruff kind of way. So you're like, oh, I'm not going to buy this. He's fantastic as him. Uh, get, they get a lot of laughs. Uh, Florence Pugh as Paige is brilliant. She doesn't kind of go into the, like, the one thing that I was a bit, was it was no, it, it wasn't even a, I thought it was a bad thing. It was a decision she made. She didn't go into the, you know, the the parties we do with Paige's accent where we're like, this is my house. She didn't do anything like that. She So she doesn't sound fully like Paige, but she did her own interpretation of the accent. And I was thinking about why she did that. And I'm like, because she would have seemed like she was taking the piss out of her if she went full Paige. You know what I mean? Um, She was very good at that. Some of the subplots were interesting where it was like, you know, Paige is working with um, divas, like old school, like models and stuff like that. And she's the only wrestler wrestler and she has to try and teach them. But then they phase her out and stuff like that. Very interesting. Not sure about the truth of it all. Um, things I was a bit iffy about uh, personally. The Vince Vaughn character was very good in the movie. If I didn't know the history, I'd say he's a great character because he just ripped into that. It's like they do promo class and like he rips into everyone's promo. Like he's like, oh, that was a really good promo in the 80s when I first saw it. Now I'm bored. What are you doing? You know what I mean? And he just, oh, so it's Bill DeMott in it. Uh, yeah, but he can't be Bill DeMott. Like, oh, okay, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. he can't. They didn't want it. Um, but I would have loved to see a Dusty Rhodes character. I thought, like, Dusty Rhodes was around when Paige was training. Like, she speaks very highly of him. So, a character based on Dusty Rhodes, like, that's, like, in this kind of movie, to just have a random, like, side character who's like, well, hello, everybody. You know what I mean? It'd be like, he'd be brilliant. But, I know, I, I, I guess I know why they did it. They probably had Vince Vaughn signed up to it. So, they're like, right, that's where we put you. And that's where you're good. Another little tiny thing I had a problem with was... um. Not to give away too many spoilers, but they kind of pitted The Rock as being responsible for everything good that ever happened to Paige. <laughs> and we know that's not true. Now, I appreciate that The Rock wanted to be in this movie to give it star power. And he's kind of putting everyone over by being in it himself. Like, that's how the movie gets released in all every theater, everywhere. So he needed to be in it, and he needed to have a part. But, like, they kind of wrote it as if... Everything that ever happened to Paige, Rock was the puppet master who, like, pulled the strings. And it's like, no. <laughs> Why? It's just like, in a movie that I know you're producing, to have it all be, and Dwayne Johnson is the hero of it all. <laughs> like, that, that'd be the big thing. I'm like, 
No, I, d- I didn't like that. But they're minor quibbles. Another good thing I thought of, they did a Rocky montage, but with WWE training. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Like, I was such, I was popping so much for that. Um, really good movie. Go out of your way to see it, guys. Wrestling fans will love it. They don't fuck it up. They don't take the piss out of wrestling. They're really respectful. Uh, really enjoyed it. Keen, what were your own thoughts? Uh, yeah. No, I, I really liked it. Mm. Um, I... Uh, I really like the scenes with, you know, like the training skill where, like, it showed everyone, like, you know, doing their thing. But it did make me wonder, you know what I mean? Like, what, like, the, the, how old, how old was that trainer have been? Like, I mean, did he look like a wrestler or did he look like a fucking next door neighbor? You know what I mean? Like, honestly, it just, it ruined the whole movie for me. If I'm being, if I'm being honest, it, it made me ask a lot of questions. And for me, that's, that's the biggest. The biggest downfall. It's but besides the that, thingy. it was really good. It's the thing you got to ask when you're starting a training skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's like... <laughs> yeah. Katie, you all right there, Katie? I'm broken. I'm broken. <laughs> now, like... The hygiene aspect as well, like yeah, of, of I mean, that kind of I thing. I hope they were insured. I, uh, these, again, these are the questions I was they asking. They never about. went into if they had like child protection and stuff uh, like exactly, that. Yeah, I mean, right? these are the sort of things that I look out for when I'm watching, <laughs> when I'm watching a movie. That's the first thing that comes to my you, head. So. You and everyone else abroad as well, probably yeah, sitting there watching uh, it I know, I, mean, the I, I was asked by loads of people before I like reviewed this movie. <laughs> You know exactly how I felt about it, and that's I'm glad to just get that off my chest. <laughs> you know, because it was the only downfall. Everything else with me was great. I mean, though. who have WWE actually produced at the end of the day? Like, who, who's come through that training school uh, to credentials? You know, it's all know. boils down I, to. I can't think of any. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good movie. Besides that, I really enjoyed it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we've had our fun. So, uh, guys, now it's time to talk about your fun because we're just three and a half weeks away. This. For the first time ever in Ireland, Buskers on the Ball becomes the pub that never sleeps as Low Blows presents our first ever WrestleMania weekend. The only way to experience WrestleMania if you can't be in New York. Starting on Saturday, 7th of April, NXT X and JPW. We screen NXT Blacklist in full from 9 p.m. Then, Aired at New Japan and Ring of Honor G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden, live and in full. Sunday, 8th of April, our annual WrestleMania party from 8pm. Pre-show entertainment including our Hall of Fame ceremony, retro gaming contests and the second annual Pool Mania. Then, watch WWE WrestleMania 35 live and in full in an amazing atmosphere. No temple bar prices on booze and full food menu available both nights. Weekend passes or individual night passes now available on eventbrite.ie or free including a table to 8 euro subscribers at patreon.com slash hashtag low blows. Table bookings automated by Eventbrite so book early to guarantee a table. Celebrate Becky Lynch finishing the job she started at the Royal Rumble in style with a packed Irish crowd in buskers on the ball. Low blows for 8 years redefining fandom. Big shout out to Jade, as always, uh, putting together a genius poster. Uh, our Avengers Endgame poster was released this week. Loved it. Loved the lads fading away as well, like the the older lads at the front. Did you did you pick up on that? I did not pick up on that. <laughs> they were fading away. What did you just think of the Jade? Like, just they're, they're a bit like weird looking. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like part of the design. I didn't, I didn't really read into it. Like. Fa- the Avengers, they're fading away. The Undertaker and Cena and Ronda. You expect me to understand the reference you've seen the avengers though no i haven't you saw infinity war we spoke about this at the time i've never seen infinity war why did you say you had like I'd never said get that. the footage Hang on, get the footage i i've never <laughs> said i've seen infinity war right. have, I, have i ever said that i don't know i thought i, I remember never saw the time you've I seen have... a film it is suspicious I yeah know. that's why i remember it <laughs> i'm like that's the one he's seen i definitely <laughs> haven't seen that all right fair enough i'll get mixed <laughs> up with something else <laughs> um but yeah, uh, Avengers Endgame uh, poster. Thank you so much to Jade. Uh, guys, this Mania is shaping up already. It's a serious card. Like, you've got Becky R- R- Rousey, Charlotte is confirmed. Rollins, Lesnar, Triple H, Batista. Kurt Angle's final match. We didn't even get a chance to speak about that. Who do we want to see Kurt go against? Who would, who would fit for Kurt? Chad Gable. 
Oh, Sheldon Benjamin came back on Raw. This oh, week. it should be someone like that who needs needs a boost. Like Sheldon Benjamin attacks Seth Rollins as like Brock Lesnar's. Like they were like the Minnesota Wrecking Crew and OVW. Yeah. It's a really old school reference, but he came back and attacked. So that'd be a great match. John Cena is my other favorite as well because I just like that dynamic. Because he had John Cena's first match. Didn't what if he? it's like Jason Jordan? A lot of Jason Jordan shout outs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. What if it's Samoa Joe? Oh, I, I know, but Chad Gable is my number one pick. But yeah, Samoa Joe though, that'd be like yeah. Good. There's some great ones there. Yeah, easy. So it's good. Watch be, it. Watch it be fucking like Baron Corbin or something. Well, his last <laughs> his last match in Pittsburgh this week was against Apollo Crews. I was like, yes, oh, one more match in Pittsburgh. Yeah, this is gonna be class. And then it's like, de, 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 de. I'm like, all right. <laughs> well, I t- at least I mean, at least he's winning. Like, <laughs> I like I. I like the tweets afterwards. I did like Apollo Crews being like, thank you so much for this honor. And I was like, yeah, it is an honor for you. <laughs> 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 He's like, that was such anger. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Not against Apollo Crews. Do you even know what an honor this is? <laughs> <laughs> Shane Miz as well was confirmed and AJ Orton looks uh, nailed on. Then that's on Sunday where we'll have a pre-show entertainment. We're going to be unveiling that as the weeks go on. Uh, Saturday night. Do not sleep on this. It's going to be a great night. NXT... Uh, NXNJPW. We will air NXT Blacklist, the New York takeover in full, featuring Walter versus Pete Dunne. Look, you get to be around these two. These are two guys like an o- these is an OTT OG against like the current OTT champion. Though we'll discuss if that's going to be for longer in a bit. Um, they're facing each other. You could get to be around an Irish crowd for that because the atmosphere is going to be hopping for that. It's going to be class. Uh, the G1 Supercard from Madison Square Garden, we're going to air that live and in full. So you don't need to go out your way. I think it's like 40 quid if you buy it on pay-per-view or you'll have to try find a dodgy stream on Reddit or something. Guys, be in a pub. Be in an atmosphere. It's a full weekend. First time ever for WrestleMania. Treat yourself. Uh, we have weekend or individual night passes available. The, car- the card for that so far, Jay White defends the IWGP Heavyweight Champion against the New Japan Cup winner. You've got the Gorilla, Gorillas of Destiny against the Briscoes title for title. You've got the Junior Heavyweight title on the line. Uh, Taiji Samori against Dragon Lee against Bandito in a three-way. The Honor Rumble is also announced. We'll be keeping you updated on the cards as we go on. That's coming up in a few weeks. Let's talk about this weekend, though. Let's talk about the biggest Irish show of the year, Scrapper Mania 5, this Saturday from the National Stadium. All of us are going, and we've been dying for this. So let's do this. Our picks and preview for the full card. Really good card, by the way. Like, they've done absolutely fantastic. Not, like, import heavy. Like, there's... Like, imports are scattered throughout the card, but it's not, like... They're really well utilized. Okay? Yeah. Like, like, I'm really, really looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. And, like, even card-wise... <coughs> We're going to talk about maybe one match that people may have issues with. But I think that's it. Like, and that's really good for a Scrapper Mania card. Um, so, like, yeah, every match people are absolutely pumped for. It's going to be great. So, we'll start off with the Tag Team World Cup. I don't know how this is working. Is this just a four-way tag match? It's, I don't know if it's I elimination so. or one fall. Or it's, I have no idea. A World Cup is usually, like... I don't know if, like... I don't know if they know what World Well, well Cup I'm assuming it's, it's one match... Like I, I, doubt, I doubt it's like split up into like semi-finals. Or I'd, I'd say it's one match. Yeah, it has and to be. I'd say it's a one-fall match. Yeah, it has to be. But like, that's not what it works. That's just a point. Like <laughs> I think it's more so because they have four nationalities. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, here we Fair. go. Lads from the Flats against the besties in the world, Aussie Open and Angelico and Ray Horace. So who have we got for this? This set of, it has to be Lads from the Flats. I, no, I don't actually, know. Don't, no, I don't, don't think so. Because no. I think we're going to have so many other Irish winners scattered that yeah. I think this, like, I want the besties to win. I was so impressed with them at homecoming. Mm. Like, I just, I love them. And I think they're the kind of tag team that'll keep getting brought over. Yeah. Like, they're new, whereas I think Aussie Open have kind of had their run. Lads from the Flats literally just challenged for the belts. Mm. And Yellico and Ray, I don't see it. They're just kind of imports that are added on. So, yeah, I think that's a good show. That's, yeah, I'll pick that. It hurts to say because I do want to, you know, cheer on the Irish lads all the time. But I just don't think lads from the flats or Angelico and Ray Horace as a team are on the level of the other two. So if I'm picking and I'm thinking this, there's this two matches where I'm kind of like, got kind of going back and forth a bit, and this is one of them. I feel like it's going to be either Aussie Open or the Bessies in the world. I think the Bessies in the world are overlooked in this match by their opponents. I feel like. Um, we saw them uh, they lost but it was against Osprey and Scotty Davis and they put in a serious amount of effort mm. you know what I mean showed just how tough they were and 
I don't know. I th- I'm going to go with the bestest in the world. Okay, that's a unanimous pick. Getting us off to a good start. We're agreeing. But reluctantly, like Aussie Open, like a close, close second. We're agreeing for now. A lot of tag team matches on this show. A lot of multi-man matches. We have uh, <laughs> this one of the matches I'm really looking forward to. Maybe the most on the card. Actually, we're going to put this like higher up to peck in order. Because Dan Barry, David Starr, we'll talk about that. That's something that's like import versus import. Dan Barry's back. Going to get the chance. David Starr, though, as well. He's, like, main event quality. He was, like, booked. Like, he could have been the main event of this. So, I think it's important he gets a win back. I'm going to go for David Starr here. Uh, with the way they tend to use the Dan Barry's, I'm thinking of, like, for example, Bobby George Jr. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? The kind of novelty characters that are really over with the crowd is they like to have them lose and be sympathetic. So, if we're going off OTT historical booking, David Starr wins this, Dan Barry gets a clap at the end. That's the way I'm going, but am I missing something? No, I think that's that's a fairly solid guess. I don't see it really going any other way. Mm. That being said, I think the roof will come off the place of Dan yeah. Barry won, which is, like, the one thing I have in my head. But, yeah, I just... If he's if he's not beaten Sammy D and he's not beaten, you know, be cool. I think he was in the first show. I don't think he's beaten David Starr. Yeah, that's fair. I like although like a quick roll up is always possible. Mm. That I could easily see that happening. I'm just leaning towards Starr. Who are you think again? I'm going to give you a long term prediction, and it hurts to say this, right? But I think Starr is going to beat Dan Barry, and I think well, obviously we'll get to it. But Devin Walter, Devin, and then I think it's going to be Devin's going to be Haskins, but then I think it's going to be Devin Starr again. And then I think Star is going to win. Ooh. And then I think Star is going to become the Irish killer. So instead of import killer, Ooh. it'll be the reverse of what Devin did for whatever amount of time. And I think it's going to be, you know, Star versus Corbin, Star versus Maxer, Star versus Thatcher, Star versus whoever, Devin again. Until a young upcoming Irish lad beats him. That's my prediction. Scotty Davis, you're thinking? LJ. I'm always going to go LJ. You know me. I'm always going to go with LJ. Um, yeah. Um, so what always that would mean he beats Dan Barry. I think he's really angry to be put in this match. He sees himself as above Dan Barry. Right. And he sees it as a huge step down. So I think, I hate to say it, but I think David Starr is going to win. Okay. So let's talk about the multi-man matches up next. This is genuinely up there of all the Devlin for it in terms of how much I'm looking forward to it. We've got uh, the Angel Cruisers and the Hurricane. Genius. Genius. Fantastic I wish I was surprised though. Oh, imagine the surprise pop. Like. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would have been amazing. Oh. <laughs> like if they'd have sold out, they could have just left that like hanging here. And nobody then, like who'd prick that? Do you no. know what I mean? Like with Jimmy Havoc, some people were like, "Oh, I think it's gonna be Jimmy Havoc. I think it's gonna be this guy." Nobody would have predicted her. And with like. that team music as well, straight away, like stand <laughs> back. Oh! And did you know? Right, I was, I was. Be Cool was in my house and we were talking about OTT imports and I'm like, sometimes I kind of wish they'd go back to using old WWE guys and I actually mentioned the Hurricane as one of the people <laughs> and the fucker never let on to me what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> he probably went to Joe straight away. He's like, you know the Hurricane lad? <laughs> <laughs> he just stole your idea. Uh, they're facing Justy, Sammy D and the newly turned team Prick. Cannot wait for this. This match is going to be fantastic. We're probably going to, we're not even thinking about it. We're probably going to get a cruise uh, stadium video that's a thing yes. has to happen oh. <laughs> did you see the promo today from Team Prick I didn't I have it saved to it, watch it's excellent okay fantastic they, um, one of them wrote um, a very emotional um, poem about the whole situation <laughs> and it's excellent love it love the fact Team Prick are back like kind of <laughs> relevant because they were like for so long they were just kind of like occasionally like cameos love the fact they're proper characters they deserve it as well like the work they put in they've Grafted and they're so over as well. So, who have we got to win this though? Like, you have Andrew Cruz saying that like he doesn't want to fight just anymore, but it doesn't feel like the blow off yet. It just doesn't. So, I'm gonna go for Justy, Sammy, and Team Prick here, but I could easily be talked out of it. I just haven't thought about who I think is gonna win this match. It's a tough one. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, this is a fly. Like, <laughs> man, he like he, he's not fucking off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and now whenever I see a fly, I'm always very careful to not say, "Get the fuck out of my face!" After last time, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> if if just talking to the fly. Not if Katie. there's one thing, <laughs> if there's one thing Katie hates, it's like flies piling on there. It's I just, know, just, just piling. You on say there. you hate that, but that was the first thing you shouted at me when I walked in tonight. Was to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but that's like. 
off air. I don't want the listeners thinking I'm a dick. I don't mind if you know. <laughs> like, <but laughs> yeah, he's got like he's got to get the subscribers. Yeah, uh, exactly. Angel Cruisers, Justy, Sammy D, and Team Prick. Who you got? I want the Cruisers and Hurricane to win because. Mm. I love the Hurricane. Do you see he pretty much announced his retirement? Oh, shit. He put out a tweet two days ago saying that uh, he's going to wind down wrestling. He's going to fulfill the indie bookings that he already has, and then that's it. So, like, last time ever matches for him and Liger. OTD are getting some scoops here. Yeah. It's, and it's all fresh as well, like, yeah. so fresh in people's minds. So there you go. That's it's pretty cool that we're getting to see that. So you've got the Cruises and Hurricane. Who you got? Oh, man. this For me, this is actually quite an easy one. I know people are, like, divided okay. and all that. But up until now, this is like Be Cool wanted Justy dead, right? And uh, that's all it was. Angel Cruz was just doing this as a favor for a friend, you know what I mean? That's that's all it was. Um, and yeah, he's lost Team Prick, and that's obviously you know kind of like uh, his backbone or something. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like it, mm-hmm. it's you know rocked him a little bit. But now he's emotionally invested. Be Cool doesn't want Justy dead anymore. It's Angel Cruz that wants Justy dead, and he's gonna fucking do it. I, I genuinely, I'm, I hope nobody gets murdered in the ring. But uh, I do. <laughs> I can't wait to see what weapon he pulls out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's for me the Angel Cruz and the Hurricane as well. You know what I mean? I, I, like just it, it has to be them. It has to be. I love how over here now in Ireland, like because this has gone on for years, we have like a tradition of like Angel Cruz, at, like Scrapper Mania. They do a big fuck off video, and then he's got a special weapon. I love how that's a thing. I just want to take a moment that we have that with the Irish wrestling scene with a full sold out national stadium. We have a WrestleMania thing that we're like dying for. <laughs> like little traditions. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I can't wait for this. I'm going to pair these two matches together because I suggest, I think people want to talk about them together. Two six man tags. One is more than hype against the Rapture. One is loser leaves town. Kings of the North against British Strong Style. They've been discussed together. Keen, you were early on this. You discussed it last week. P- a lot of people want to see British Strong Style against more than hype. Uh, people coming out and saying it's like they did not react well to Kings of the North against British Strong Style. But to defend it a little bit, like this is like I did want to see the more than hype match. That that is what I want to see. But I can I'm not going to criticize this match, and I am going to enjoy it because I do get the fact that they have a blood feud. What I will criticize is that it's like. All right, it's a British strong style of losing. <laughs> I'm like, because I don't have that doubt, like, because I don't have that doubt, I feel the stiff is one of those. Sometimes OTT can book themselves into a corner. Like, do you remember where they had the uh, um, legit 100 against more than hype? And it's like losing team was split, but then more than hype were announcing the tag team match the next day. And it's like, right, so legit 100. Lo- like, we kind of knew they were losing, but like, now you've just confirmed it. Like, so, uh, like, that's my criticism with it. Having said that, these should be two really good matches. For me, I'm going to pick More Than Hype and Kings of the North. That's your money match. I feel that More Than Hype not winning the belt a few months ago was a mistake. Um, I think it's left the Kings of the North in kind of a holding pattern. And it's not good for either team because now it's like you have to go all the way back up and build More Than Hype all the way back up and have them win again and have them build up a winning streak as they go back for the belts, which will be great at the time. But I feel like you had a moment a few months ago where if they'd have won, it would have been a bit of a surprise still to a lot of fans, and it would have been like, ah, you have them at their peak. Um, whereas I think they've lost them. I think Kings of the North now, they're not, their work is fantastic, but they're not buzzing as much as everyone else. I think taking the belts off them a few months ago would have let them rebuild in a way and let them get back some of the novelty. So I think that was a mistake, but I think they're going to right that mistake. I'm more than hype are coming for the belts. Uh, more than hype, Kings of the North for me. Keen, you've got something to say. Yeah, I do get you when it comes to like you know the Kings losing earlier, but I feel like more than hype winning the tag titles in that match would have been kind of overshadowed by everything else that night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like It would have felt like a bit of a footnote, but in reality, it's such a big thing. I don't know. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen in hindsight. Well, what, okay. So you say your favorite is your favorite moment from OTT still the nasties um, winning the belts. It's close. That's that's up there though. Yeah, that's a huge moment for you. Was that overshadowed by Finn Balor and Osprey Ricochet? That wasn't the same show, wasn't it? No, no different shows. Well, oh, no, just the turn. Apart. Just the turn. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I made a mistake. But like. That okay, so take that. Just he turned it. That's a big moment. Yeah. In the undercards. That wasn't overshadowed by like you can have big moments throughout a show, you know what I mean? I I, I, I don't know. I, I think I just didn't think it was the right crowd for it. It was a real kind of like Yeah, I, I agree, know. but I think that's that's a mistake in itself. You know what I mean? Like it's that should have been a featured match and that was an opportunity and then because it didn't happen it was like now you've got two teams in a holding pattern. 
You know what I mean? Where it's like, we know this is coming. We know this is happening. And, like, it should happen. But, like, now we're just left with two separate matches that are just kind of meh. Where it's like, you could have a really big fuck-off match. Like, you could have more than hype British Strong Style, more than hype Kings of the North, or tag, t- tag titles or whatever. And it, you just do, you have two great teams, not criticizing the teams in any way, but just, there's been mistakes made here. And they need to write them, whereas I don't think they should need to write them. That's that's my kind of issue with it, personally. Katie, Katie, how do you feel about these two matches in general? Yeah, see, I was really rooting for more than hype and British Strong Style as well, because like, it's like more than hype for me are like the new British Strong Style. They're just that like really entertaining trio, and they kind of mirror each other, like like LJ and Trent. Remember that match they had? What show was that? Uh, yes. Yeah. LJ's first. That was excellent, but like such flashes of like what could come. And then like you've got the, the, the Pete Zone and, and Tyler Bate, like Nathan and Darren. It's just I just think they're really well matched and really well suited. Yeah. And I just really wanted to see it so much. And we may never get it now. And we may never get it. That's the kicker for me. It fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I still think both matches separately are going to be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, we need to remember how much heat the Rapture get. Like, and, you know, this could be one of the matches where the Irish win and the, the whole place goes, like, a light and the roof comes off. Like, Charlie Sterling is, like, one of the best wrestlers yeah. in Europe. So, like, that's going to be fantastic. But I think it is just, it's a shame it's getting overshadowed by everybody wanting yeah. the, the more than hype British strong style match. Um, and with the Kings, it's this weird thing that OTT has a really good tag division, really good tag teams, but no one ever seems to hold the belts. Yeah. So, like, the Cruisers have never held the belts. Justy and Sam together have I know the Nasties have held the belts, but they've never held the belts. Team Prick are a separate tag team. More than Hype have never held the belts. You have all these tag teams that have never really been in the tag race, you know? Yeah. So it's that weird thing of, like, is it time to kind of... This is the thing. If you, like, the problem is the Kings of the North have held it for so long that they've kind of cleaned out their division. And they seem, not stale, because you love them when they're there. And their work is great. But... It's like, oh, we're getting the Kings of North British Strong Style again. That's a great fucking match. We shouldn't feel that way about it, but we do because it's like if you put, if you put, if you give someone else a run with the belts, then everyone else is rejuvenated because it's like, oh, are Justy and Sammy gonna wrestle more than hype? Or you know, you just re, you just reset everything. Then you're like, how did the Kings of North come back up to into the tag title race? And you just reset everything. Whereas now, yeah, like I said, holding power. If British Strong Style win, do they win the tag titles? No, they're not on the line. So they're not on the line. No. So <laughs> potentially, <laughs> if Britain, so this if the Kings it, like, lose and they have to leave, they leave with the tag belts. Or did they vacate them? I don't know. This is what I mean. This, this is my issue with the match. Mm. It's like the titles aren't on the line. If what it, the fuck? <laughs> it feels like a stiff tacked on, like when you could have just had the Kings of the North beat them for the belts and then had British Strong Style do an emotional goodbye anyway because we're guessing that it like and as well it plays into it where it's like this could be our last time seeing them we know that already every time they're on the card we're like we may never get another chance to see them so let's go to this you know what I mean you don't need to beat it over the head with this is the last time you'll ever <laughs> this is the last time you'll ever see them this comes out on a <laughs> megaphone like <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to tell us that because now we're like oh so the Kings are winning alright go on. Yeah. see this is the thing though Trent Seven isn't under the same contract as the other two right he can do indies and also as well they have this where it's like you never get to wrestle in Dublin again I'm like oh are they booked in the north or is that <laughs> right now? I'm like yeah. yeah I was gonna say it's like loser leaves town but it's like well neither of them are based here anyway so it's like <laughs> It's like, a, it's like when you got banned from Nigeria at that time. It's not really a massive, like, it's a massive loss, you know what I mean? Like, So, uh, are you going more than Hype Kings as well? Uh, yeah, I think I have to. Yeah, yeah, it's looking that way. Here's one that's an interesting one to book, and a great match. that got even better during the week when the news broke. The Juice and Thunder Liger will be retiring next year at Wrestle Kingdom in the Tokyo Dome. So, this is his last match he'll likely ever have in Ireland. Unless Phoenix want to somehow get in there. Like <laughs> oh, they, go on the Paddy's Day show. Go got, on. They got Dan Barry. So, like, going to be it's such a great flag. Juice and Liger with Steve Savage and Limerick. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know he's not cleared, but just clear him for it. Like, it'll be so good. This is a dream match, though, that we didn't realize was a dream match until it was announced. But everyone's looking forward to this. Juice and Thunder Liger against Scotty. Davis, the big question is, 
does New Japan contracts let Scotty Davis win this? Because <laughs> if he can, he totally should. Like, this is, like, candidate for a quick roll-up. Here's the thing. Even Juice and Thunder, like, even Juice and Thunder, like, are winning and shaking Scotty's hand afterwards. That's a huge deal. So that's mm-hmm. fine. I think that's probably what's going to happen. But, man, I would love if Scotty just got a quick roll-up here. That'd be, imagine just the explosion. But do we have enough explosions on this? Yeah, see, we've got we've got our main event, which is going to be, you know, that'll probably be it. So you don't want to overshadow that either. So Juice and Liger is probably the best, but it would be cool if, is all I'm saying. I think, because in my head, I paired this with uh, Session Ma and Miko. Mm. Just, you know, just because the two legends. And I think either Session Ma or Scott E has to go yeah. over. You know, in my head, I just don't see, like, like Miko and Liger going over. I don't know why. It's just, I feel like one of the Irish needs that big moment, you know, that big moment of triumph. Right now I'm thinking it's Session Mock getting it. Um, but yeah, I think I think really good match from Scotty, handshake at the end, and suddenly he has the attention of yeah. everywhere. Yeah, he's in, yeah, like he's in hallowed conversations. Mm. And like, they, they, if, this is, if this lives up to the bill and that's an awesome free match to put out and we really sell for Scotty because that's going everywhere then, um, if they do afterwards. Who you got in this? I think Scotty's with him. Okay, of course it is. Yeah, I just, think, I just think he wants it more. You know what I mean? There's more on the line for him. This is a career-defining match, you know what I mean? So he wants to get that big win. He's going to get it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, ODT women's title on the line. This is the match I've probably spent most of my time thinking about how to book this. Raven Creed against Debbie Keitel. <clears throat> it, here's the way I'm trying to look at it. They're after tapping into something special with Debbie Keitel. With this Woke Queen stuff, I love the social media she's doing. I love her road to Scrapple Mania. I'm reading that every single day. Like, she is after clicking in a big, big way. Like, look, we knew for the longest time, like, there is bucket loads of potential here. But now we're seeing, right, we're realizing this potential. She has clicked into another gear. Love the promo she's doing with Valkyrie. That needs to be a regular thing. And I'm not just saying that because like, it's very familiar to Loblo's HQ. I'm saying that it's just great um, what they're doing. And like, I feel, it feels like bad to take the belt away from Raven when it feels so short. But at the same time, if Raven wins here, she's vanquished Debbie Keitel, her arch nemesis. I love the storyline of having Debbie as... Um, you know, the torn and Raven side. She's actually taking another thing away from her. Raven gets this big moment. She wins the women's title. She's like going out to prove points to people and this and that. And uh, then Debbie's just like, nope, you don't get any of that because now I'm the women's champion. It'd be a ballsy pick because like it just like the the ascent of Debbie is happening very fast in OTT. Like the ascent from like, you know, when you look at her road to Scrap Romania, it's like, a year ago, she was on her first Tivoli show. So, less than a year ago, actually, if you think about the dates. And now, she will she win in the stadium? Sometimes, OTT as well like to have their like their Irish champions. They they like to have them. Um, they like to have them win as a babyface. They like to have them come from underneath, and it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, like this is this is a big moment. Like so, but I think it would be better for the women's division. It would be the balls here, but the the right call in this case to put the belt on Debbie Keitel, so I'm going to pick her um, for this. But I would not be surprised to see Raven win. For me, this is the most difficult match to predict of the card. Like, what that road to Scrapper Mania has kind of brought people's attention is how many times Debbie Keitel has actually beat Raven. Mm. Like, she pinned her on the last show. I mean, okay, I know I was a partner who had to leave in the first six, <laughs> 60 seconds of the match. <laughs> you left her hanging. But she still pinned the champion. <laughs> and that would not happen. <laughs> <laughs> it was still a handicap match, okay? <laughs> and, like, their first ever match, she pinned her as well in that. Like, so, like, there's a lot of scope. And when you take it outside ODT, like, like there's a lot of history there. I, I think Debbie's going to take it too. Um, and I don't think it is a bad thing because the money's always in the chase, you know. Yeah. So, and then you got Valkyrie, you got Valkyrie floating around. You know, she's with she's with Debbie all the time now. So, where's she gonna be? For me, I, I, I'm gonna let Keen's got a lot to say. I can see by his face. I'm gonna come to that. But for me, yeah, the money is in the chase, and Raven is like a character who's driven by what she doesn't have and what she wants to prove to people. If you then give her a belt and you make her that person, like she's doing great with kind of building her own kind of motivation around it. But for me, her chasing something and her looking to prove people wrong and climb over mountains, that's her motivation and that makes her a better character. So um, 
like giving her a mountain to climb up makes her better. For me, Raven Creed is a natural face anyway. She's a natural fuck you, Stone Cold Steve Austin type baby face where it's like I'm representing a portion of this crowd and I'm going to come out on badass. I'm not going to obey any rules. I'm going to kick ass. I'm going to do this. Those, those kind of characters work better, like you say, mm. when they're chasing for the belt. And Debbie, her arch rival, taking her off her in the stadium, yeah. that'd be fucking amazing. And I will say, I think this match is going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah. Like, I've seen a lot of their matches from Cork. I've seen a lot of their matches from Contenders and stuff. This is going to open them up to a whole new audience. I feel like maybe some of the bigger crowds haven't seen the best of Raven Creed even. I know she's champion, but like... I just I think this is going to be the match that turns people's heads. Two things on that note, actually, that I did want to bring up. Thanks for reminding me. Um, one, I hope this match doesn't get put in a shitty position on the card. Like I felt Ray, I felt Valkyrie and Sami Zayn last year kind of got screwed a bit. Now, what could be done? It was came after Will Ospreay against Matt Riddle. It was a toilet break match, and you know, like. Like, whatever match was in that slot was going to be, but they came out there probably, like, Valkyrie got the least amount of profile. I don't think she'd been on many Tivoli shows at that stage, like, apart from Defiant, and, like, only hardcore people knew her. So, like, they just, they were put in a position to lose, not intentionally or anything like that, but I hope it gets put in a good position. And also, here's another thing. I spoke about this last Scrapper Mania. I heard a return of the shitty chance because, again, a lot of the Irish women the people who are coming for the imports don't necessarily, they're not as familiar with them because they're not going to contenders. They're not going, they're not following the VOD or anything like that. So for the hardcore people that are going, for the people listening in right now, give this match your fucking support. Be loud for this match. They deserve it. They work their asses off and there will be a casual element there who may not be as familiar with the storyline or anything like that. Give this, give these your support. They deserve it. And they will repay that with a fantastic match because we know they can do it. They've done it everywhere. Uh, Keen, you've got a lot to say on this. Um, what score is it? Liverpool have a corner, so I'm going to guess they have no score. <laughs> How far behind We're is on a lag. Mind? It's an internet <laughs> <laughs> Um No, just, just to Katie because I, I heard Katie say uh, Debbie winning isn't a bad thing. I'm just like, all right. Like, that, that's coming from you, you know what I mean? That's someone who's... It just means when I come back, I can face her for the title, that's why. Ah, I, you know? I see, I see. Now I guess you're yeah, right. Yeah, like, that's I have a game plan in this. I'm not stupid. Ah, like, okay. <laughs> no, I, I, that's all I really wanted to ask. Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going with Raven, because um, she's deadly. Mm, that's, that's it. It's, it's, like, it's like with LJ. I'm not, not going to go against, you know, my favourites. So, I'd, I'd say Raven's beating Debbie. I'm okay. Lucky. Okay, interesting. Another women's match uh, for me to call main event. Uh, of this uh, that's helping shift this along with Walter Devlin Cesar Matt Martina although I think she's just going with Martina I like the way it's just Martina for this one it's not Cesar Matt it's like this is a serious wrestle match um, against Miko Satamora gonna be awesome it's basically built around like Martina's like you know all the times I went to Japan and like since I've come back I've had to do Raven and the old stuff you used to I'm a fucking good wrestler and I'm gonna fucking show you against one of the best so I'm really pumped for this I think she's gonna do it I think she's gonna absolutely nail it Mako Satomura such a great name to get in there um, I would agree with Katie I think yeah I think Liger and Martina winning this um, but it could easily just flip the opposite way um, I, I hope Martina wins this I don't see any needs to have Mako win this match I think it'd be huge for Martina puts her right back in the you know women's style conversation as well like think of think of the new matches we get we're talking about like with a new champion you get loads of new matches have we seen Debbie and Martina no in OCT that's a totally fresh match if Debbie's the champ, there we go. That's a match you can sell a show on. So, um, yeah, I think Martina's winning this, um, and I hope she does too. I think Martina wins this. I think Martina wins the triple threat they just announced for Belfast, mm-hmm. the GN number one contendership, and I think we get Martina versus Haskins. Oh. That's what I think. Yeah, interesting. Um, there's loads of ways. I do think she's winning this because I, I just think she needs to. I think this is like – this is – such a good arc you know and she she has put in a shift in her last few matches i think the cage match like whoever was left turning against her like can't can't watch that and be like oh this girl doesn't take it seriously so i i I think and i hope she is winning yeah and i think like i i I think even a lot of that element is gone now but i think Mm. this is the final nail in the coffin for fuck like for her saying fuck you like she's a mental checklist like cage match japanese legend (laughs) like all like just going through it all fuck you i can (laughs) wrestle she's gonna show the world this saturday who you got game um what if we get like session session miko then 
And she's like, <laughs> she comes out and she's like, she's like it's just, everyone thinks it's going to be like dead serious. Martina comes out after all this and she's dead serious and she's just like... No oh, team music, no yeah, raving, like just this, straight out walks this. out, does a bow on the stage, <laughs> Japanese stuff. This is my night. And all of a sudden you just hear like Darude Sandstorm or like Maniac 2000 and it's just like, <laughs> out comes Mako Satomura. This is completely like ruins Session the moment. Session Mako. <laughs> <laughs> and I still think it's going to be uh, Martina either way, so that's going to be great. Okay, interesting. Now, the main event. A rematch of possibly the greatest ever match to ever take place on this island. Walter defends the OTT Championship against Jordan freaking Devlin. Even you saying that, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Keen's marking out. I think they, they put a new promo out, I think, as we were doing this. Uh, I saw someone mention the group chat. And Ooh, I'm, I'm like, I've, been, I've heard things about this promo, so. I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait. Uh, Valder against Devlin. Will Jordan be able to get the job done? Can he bring the belt back to Ireland? And will it be better than the original match? Keen, you're marking the yeah. fuck out. <laughs> I'm gonna go with you first. <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be the best match ever. I genuinely like. I know, like, I hate going into a match having like such high expectations, but I genuinely think this is gonna be the best match I've ever seen in my life. I genuinely like. I think Devlin's gonna do it, and I'm just. It's gonna be so like. Oh, just the atmosphere and just everyone losing their shit and just like when they play the Sean Ryan video beforehand and you know you know when they play the whole video beforehand and it goes off before the, before the entrance to start and everyone's just like, oh, you know, it builds up. It's so good. I'm so excited for this one. Oh, my God. Everyone on Saturday night, stick to your fucking times. <laughs> Do not let this show run long. Do not have people going out for this. Stick to your fucking times. Every match, eight minutes. I don't care. Give this match an hour if you have to because this is the match that's selling you. Do you think Devlin's going to do it, though? Yeah, 100%. 100 billion, trillion. I'm, I'm going to jinx it. I should shut the <laughs> But I, oh, man, I, just, I hope so. Like, just hope he does it. Could there be a last-minute twist in there, like the David Starr twist? Could there, wh- and what could that be? Is there anything Haskins that cashing could, in. Yeah. Haskins isn't there. What? Is he no, he's, Has- on. he's not announced. It'd be a hell of a, like... It'd be too I know, bad, my heart no. couldn't take it. I'm just saying. The surety, the surety he won't. Come on, don't. Ha- just, don't. just give right. me my Jordan Devlin win. Just do it. Like. Imagine you got your Jordan Devlin win. The streamers are going off. He's in the <laughs> ring holding the belt up. It's a repeat. Uh, B in the Elite. That show. And then all you hear is. And then he comes down, hits him with the briefcase, start the match. One, two, three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go oh one better. God. I'm going to say, what happens if Devlin wins? And then you hear the music, and everybody's like. Fuck off! And he runs it with the briefcase. Devin just kicks his head off, hits him, you know, with whatever. <laughs> Back pile driver beats him. <laughs> I like his ending better. That would be class. And it could happen. That would be class. Because I'm like, what? I mean, shit booking for Mark Haskins, but still, I fair th- fucks. You took him for the team. <laughs> <laughs> he still has a fucking title. I don't fuck him. I don't care. Like I want, the, <laughs> I want Devlin to just just walk around beating everyone's head. Just fucking, I don't know. Just it's. I, I just, I'm really, 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 really looking forward to this. I am just, ah, oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> I feel like if I don't hear Haskins' music now, I'm going to be disappointed. The anarchist in me just kind of... <laughs> if I hear his music, right, I'm just going to walk out of the building so I can live in a world where Jordan Devlin <laughs> just won the title. <laughs> That's it. I'm finished wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Pause the VOD. Pause the VOD anytime it goes to like, uh, <laughs> yeah. whatever, That's and then just, just don't go to any future Katie's shows. just like, yeah. wrestling ended. That's done. Uh, That's finished. the series finale. Yeah. Devlin left as champion. That's it. Yeah. I'll leave it there. <sighs> <Don't know. laughs> um... I'm going to pick Devlin to leave Scott Perry. Yeah. Yeah. I, think it, I think it's happening. It's going to be amazing. Uh, will they be able to live up to the first? Will they um, be able to get 2,000 people? Like that weird reaction in Sir Road. Will they be able to get that again? I think that it, intensity. It, it, it'll be like Osprey Walter. You know, yeah. the way they had like... Cause up until then, it's like... Okay, yeah, the stadium has gone mad. It went mad for, you know, the elite and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm like, you'd rarely see them go mad for... I mean, I know Osprey's out. Like, they're big names. But I just feel Devlin can do that as well. I just yeah. I feel like Walter Devlin's going to get a mad reaction. Absolutely. It's, how could you not? Like, yeah. it's Ireland versus the world. Come on. <laughs> it is. It's, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great night. And I think we're going to get a happy ending. So, 
Fingers crossed. We shall see. And a Westmead at WrestleMania for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Tony Chimo comes out at the <laughs> end. <laughs> Just to announce it. <laughs> Just in case you thought this was like the peak. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, guys, we are done for this week. Uh, say hello to us if you're at Scrapper on Saturday. Uh, yeah, uh, Keen, have you got? You don't have any videos. Uh, subscribe to Corporate. But Keen I know. Well, I have a wrestling show that I'll be going to on Sunday. I meant to say that Paddy's yeah. Day. If there's not enough wrestling on Saturday, and there never is, what can you do on Sunday? You can come to Phoenix Wrestling in. Dolan's in Limerick City. I nearly forgot the name of it because I'm very, <laughs> very tired. It's going to be mad. I was going to say Steve Savage and Justy. Steve Savage hasn't been cleared, but they have a replacement. And uh, they, oh, I don't know who it is. Didn't tell me. But like, <laughs> they have a replacement of some Liger. sort. It's Liger. It could be. Think about, oh I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Think about all the names that OTT have like over it's just it's the weekend they're chilling in Ireland it's, it's Paddy's they're not going to leave for Paddy's Day Paddy's Just Day. Steve Walter <laughs> because you could imagine Justy like coming out and being like you're going to send me out against some little jobber from Phoenix and then it's like did it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what I want to see is the conversation backstage of Justy and Walter talking about the match <laughs> and Justy just with his finger like so what I do is I <laughs> You're not putting that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, Dan Barry, of course, is yes. going to be there. Dan Barry versus Marion Armstrong versus B. Kill. Could, could Dan Barry get his first or well, maybe second win on Irish soil after David Starr? Who knows? Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, there's uh, Ricky Graham versus Callum Black versus Sammy D. Rust up versus Club Rock Shandy. Um, Dimitri Krakowicz is putting in a late uh, bid to be in that re- match. He really wants to be in that match. Yeah. Michael May, big win, make big win, open challenge. That's Liger. That it could be Liger. <laughs> it could be Liger. I'm just. It could <laughs> be. I've convinced myself Liger's going to live. Michael Liger. May against Liger. Fuck me. That actually would be a great. That'd match. be unreal. It could be Mako Satomura's uh, <laughs> debut. You never know. You never know. Like who's think about everyone that's around the hurricane. Right. Think about the uh, hurricane. <laughs> I feel like we should say if you do travel to Limerick, we're not telling you that these people are going to be on that show. <laughs> could be. Don't, don't be mad at Phoenix if they're not. <laughs> oh, this is not Phoenix fault. We're yeah, not I'm promising just... this. <laughs> uh, also, there is Liam Royals debuting. It's going nice. to be him and Nita Vaughn against Amy Lonsey and Matt Skyler. There's, there's loads on the show. I've probably forgotten a couple of things, but I am very much looking forward to this. It's um, like how uh, I like how you know now with the Kurds thing and now with everyone else debuting we're realising because you just assume like ah oh, everyone wrestles for Phoenix but there's actually a lot of people who haven't so many debuts in the show there's new names coming in all the time and now the Kurds thing just like added like 10 possibilities and stuff so yeah love it love what Phoenix are doing so uh, check that out this Saturday or, or this Sunday on Paddy's Day Paddy's weekend you can just spend it all wrestling best way to spend it like who wants to get pissed in the streets and piss their pants the comedy night on Friday as well yes Jesus yes yeah, Dan Barry Matt uh, Tony Kelly. Yeah. Uh, a few others. Um, Session Moss Blind Date. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another one. Should be a bit Danny crack. Kelly. Uh, Dwayne Dugan. Dwayne Dugan as well, yeah. Of Luke and Dwayne fame. Back in the day. Sorry, that's an old school Loblaws <laughs> reference. <laughs> uh, Loblaws Hall of Famer, actually, as well. So Mad, is he actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. <laughs> the original one. Uh, yeah, but there you go. Uh, so, guys, check that out. That's going to be fantastic. That's in Wheelands on Friday Wheelands, as well. Yeah. Tickets still available, eventbrite.e. So, check all that out. We shall see you at the weekend at some stage, I'm sure, so say hello. Uh, but until then, we're, we'll be back next week with the return of Queen versus Keen. It's been a busy couple of weeks since Katie's come back, so we're going to... If you didn't listen to Aslo Blows last week, Keen got a point in Queen versus Keen for getting five out of five by himself on an Eric Rowan quiz. Um, so check that it's out. the most keen sentence ever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with that next week, and we're also going to be reviewing Scrapper and everything else that comes up. So, guys, uh, until then, for Katie Harvey, for Corporate Keen, I've been Rick Nash, and that's the bottom line. Because Lolo said so.